The Birmingham Stallions are riding high in the USFL with five wins in a row, taking them from a 2-5 and five start to playoff contention in the top Central Division. And last Monday night on ESPN, the Stallions ended the Michigan Panthers' six-game winning streak with a 23-20 win in overtime on this 46-yard field goal by Scott Norwood. The standings show how critical tonight's game in Denver is to the Stallions' quest for a playoff spot. In the top Central Division, it's still Tampa Bay, but only by a game over Chicago and only by two games over Michigan and the hard-charging Birmingham Stallions. The Denver Gold are the last team to beat Birmingham, but the Gold have fallen on hard times. They lead the league in only one statistic, that being attendance. The Gold tied for last in the Pacific Division with a 4-8 and record along with Arizona. L.A. is on top, Oakland in the middle, but the Denver Gold have been struggling. And 10 days ago, head coach Red Miller was fired. And earlier this week, the Gold hired former Denver Broncos quarterback Craig Morton to be their new head coach. Morton becomes the fifth quarterback in pro football history to coach in the same city in which he played. Tonight, the Denver Gold with new head coach Craig Morton hosts the Birmingham Stallions from Mile High Stadium in Denver, live on ESPN. Good evening from Mile High Stadium in the beautiful city of Denver, Colorado on a beautiful night. Welcome to this evening's football game between the Denver Gold and the Birmingham Stallions. These two teams met six weeks ago. Denver won that game 9-7. to seven. Since that time, these two teams have taken divergent paths. The Birmingham Ball Club has won five in a row. Denver has gone the other way. They've lost five in a row. Should be an interesting matchup tonight. And in the storm of a controversy just about 10 days ago, while Red Miller was fired as the Denver coach, George Army replaced him. And just two days ago, Craig Morton, one of the most popular of all the Denver football players, was named the head coach of the Denver Gold. My name is Tom Kelly. My broadcast partner is Don Heinrich. What kind of an impact, Don, can Craig have on this club with only two days of being the boss? Well, watching practice yesterday and talking with Craig, you're not going to see a lot of formation changes, a lot of uh, motions, any shotgun attack. He will expect to do that within the next couple of weeks when he has more time and more input. At the moment, his biggest concern is momentum and enthusiasm. He wants them to play with reckless abandon. He wants them to try and make something good happen. He can have an impact. He is going to call the plays. And I think that you'll see a diversified attack, more throwing, more play action. This is where Craig is going to be a contributor this evening. You certainly have to admire the job Raleigh Dutch has done. His ball club has won five in a row. They are really on a roll. They certainly are, and Raleigh has done an outstanding job. His offensive line executing extremely well. The backs are picking the holes. Lane, his quarterback, has performed well. He has not gotten them into much trouble. Then the defense hasn't been questioned. They have played well all season. But they're coming back with only three days rest. That could be a problem. Definitely a problem, and Raleigh is concerned about that. The fact that they could come out flat. Mentally, they're ready. Physically, they may not be. They recognize that this is an important game for them. 42,000 fans are there about, we expect, on hand for this ball game tonight. In fact, they're up in the air saying good luck to Craig. Tom Meese will be along with more. First, we'll pause for this message. The Red Hot Birmingham, Birmingham Stallions and the not-so-warm Denver Gold at Mile High Stadium on a beautiful night, temperature of 80 degrees, six miles out of the northwest, that's the wind. And the field is dry and in perfect condition. Of course, it is in a baseball configuration. As you look down and see Brian Spielman getting ready to kick off, Raleigh Dutch, head coach at Birmingham, whose club has really turned it around. Five straight wins, very much in it. And Craig Morton, who must be feeling as many nervous butterflies in his stomach as he ever did starting as a quarterback. Here he is in his first ever head coaching spot. Delightful guy has a great personality and a very laid-back, easy manner about him. And it'll be interesting now to see how his club performs. Spielman, out of capital, can hit the ball pretty good. And, of course, in this rarefied, thin, mile-high air, why, it's a kicker's paradise, to be sure. He's got a 50-yard field goal. In fact, it was Spielman's 50-yard field goal effort that beat 
this Birmingham ball club the first time these two clubs uh, met. Michael Kincaid is the deep man getting primed for a return. Spielman's 50-yarder won that game 9-7, to seven, though Birmingham had all the statistics in that game. Denver came out with the victory. It was their last one. Well, you know, you mentioned Craig Morton uh, probably having a few butterflies. You know, when we were talking with him yesterday, he said this would probably be the toughest game that he has ever faced. So here he is, much like Steve Spurrier, who had some college coaching experience before he took over the Tampa club. Now Craig Morton, his first time around. Here's Spielman advancing on the ball, Don Heinrich, and the kick is not all that deep, but very high. Coming to Kincaid at the 10. Gets bumped by one of his own men and is dropped at the 15-yard line. So Birmingham will start first and 10 on their own 15-yard line. Downfield making the tackle was um, Rob, uh, Robert Napton, K-N-A-P-T-O-N. He's a defensive linebacker. Bobby Lane walks on to quarterback the ball club. He's had a magnificent season since the uh, ball club has put together five wins. He took over for the injured Reggie Collier. And um, he plays almost as good as the guy who uh, of the legendary Bobby Lane. Big hole straight ahead. Talton, and what a fine running back he is, out of the 25 to about the 27-yard line. It's a first and 10. And Talton's having quite a career. Three touchdowns and 466 yards. And in the last four or five ball games, Don Henrique, he has been outstanding. And he certainly did nothing fancy there as Raleigh Dodge on the sideline is looking on at his club. That time, Talton, a straight-ahead dive-type play against the 3-4 defense of Denver, opened a big hole. Number one in rushing, this Birmingham ball club. Wide to the left side is Anderson. To the right side is Smith, of course, with a talented receiver. And Lane with a play-action fake and time. Upfield caught by Anderson, dumped at the 40-yard line, dropped by Nate Miller, but not before the Birmingham Stallions have still another first down. Well, they get the play-action fake uh, coming in there as Cornelius quarrels. Then Lane, as he turns around, looking for Anderson, came down, ran a little hook, and Lane had to take just a moment before he could unload the ball, but a good catch by Anderson. And now Anderson is flanked wide to the right, and Smith is set to the left. Another first down, and Birmingham is at their own 40-yard line. Talton again, big hole, up the middle into the secondary at the 48-yard line before he is knocked off his pins. Dumars and Tyler making the stop there, and Talton is finding big yardage and a lot of room to run up the middle. Turn the play over. Adelette out in front of him, 78, gets a nice block on the linebacker to that side, and good running by Talton as he makes a little move to the inside picks up a couple extra yards two dive plays in the first down on both situations nice yardage second down and two now birmingham on their own 48 yard line first possession opening period of play and the stallions now send smith in motion to the right side and again talton and again a big hole and again he's into the secondary and into denver territory down to the 43 yard line before gherkin can bring him down that's going to be a pickup of nine and another first and ten well, once again, running over that veteran center, Tom Banks, and uh, Buddy Adelette, who's having such a great year at the left guard, Mark Battaglia on the right side, doing a good job of knocking uh, Whittingham, Kyle Whittingham, one linebacker out of there, and Putt Choate, the other linebacker. Wide to the right side now is Stevens. Wide to the left is Smith. Stevens, uh, Smith comes in motion. The handoff this time to White, and White is close to the 40-yard line. And the Denver fans respond uh, for the defensive showing by White, Short, and Turner, the three down linemen. They're going to mark it at the 41, really, a gain of two, and it'll be second down and eight. And that's the first short yardage situation that Birmingham has come up with. So far, they have marched from their own 15 to the Denver 41, and they've done it in a rather spectacular fashion. Anderson flanked to the left side. Smith is set wide to the right. The back's in an eye formation. Lane the quarterback, play action fake, has time, out in the flat, incomplete, pass with the flag goes down, pass intended across the way for Mason, the tight end. David Martin, the corner on that side, is guilty of the infraction, came over the top just a little quick, again Lane going with the play action, but... Uh, David Martin, number 13, just a little bit over anxious. Played it pretty well. Got good drive on the receiver. 
And the pass interference stepped off from the line of scrimmage, takes it down to the 26-yard line, and of course still another first down for this Birmingham club that has moved uh, very steadily. Well, the fans are cranked up. Before the game, they were all stomping in the stands very enthusiastically. Mm -hmm. But right now, Birmingham controlling the ball primarily on the ground has ripped some big holes in there, and a defense that has been normally pretty solid is uh, get taken apart at the moment. Indeed, against the rush, why this Denver defense has been fifth in the United States Football League. Now they find themselves uh, at their own 26-yard line, and Stallion's on a move, and again it's Talton, and this time he's inside the 20 or thereabouts. Brought down by number 53, that would be Kelvin Newton getting a starting assignment. He's out of TCU, a rookie, six-footer, 220-pound outside linebacker. Mark it right at the 20, gain of six, second and four. Talton out of Cornell. Has two years of pro experience, 6'1 and 195 pounder. He's a smooth running back and he picks his holes well and he's getting outstanding uh, support and a great opportunity to run from that offensive line which is becoming one of the very best, if not the best in the USFL. Smith comes in motion, Lane is the quarterback, hands uh, to Johnson, breaking inside and he's down to the 15 yard line. Lonnie Johnson out of Indiana is another two-year pro running back and Whittingham makes the stop and Johnson is playing more and more on not only uh, scrimmage plays but uh, kick return and punt return specialties. Banks at center, Tom Banks the veteran as he steps back got a pretty good angle on Lavelle Short, Short uh, starting after having been injured doesn't really blow him back, Banks more of a finesse type center he gets the job done, forces Short to go around him and they pick up some yards. Mason's the tight end and Smith Along with Anderson, flanked to the left side, blitz showing by the gold as the handoff to White, trying to turn the corners, dropped it about the line of scrimmage. Very good play. Short was there. Dumars coming up as well. And big number 92, that's Lavelle Short, 260-pound middle guard out of Colorado. And there's White going off the field. Billy White, of course, is the son of the famed baseball Bill White. You can see why David Dumars leads that secondary with 105 tackles. He's up there in a strong force position. Of course, he does know that Birmingham is primarily a running team, so he was quick to react, got up, and made a nice tackle. It's second down and 10. First time that Birmingham has been stopped for no gain in this series, which started on their own 15. Lane back to throw. Downfield in the end zone. Touchdown for Birmingham. And down to congratulate the receiver Smith is Anderson. Smith getting the um, touchdown for Smith. It is his second on the year. He came into the ball game with 28 receptions. And here's Lane throwing it again. Excellent protection up front as you can see the offensive line. Not letting anybody in. Lane having plenty of time to let Smith operate. He runs down, does a little hook number, hits the crack between the safety and the cornerback. Another angle of him coming downfield. You can see the linebacker coming that way as he goes to the turn in. Big mistake by the safety man at that point as he's too far off. There's no sense covering him deep in the end zone and he was five yards deep. And the try for the extra point by Norwood. Should be routine. Norwood puts it up and uh, through the uprights. And so we've got a timeout coming with 9.43 to go. First period, Birmingham leads seven to nothing. On the sidelines, Craig Morton talking with one of his players, obviously from the defensive unit. And uh, now we'll see whether his ball club can generate some offense as they get their first crack at the football. Kicking off will be for Birmingham, Norwood. And the deep man, that's uh, Scott Stamper. He's a rookie out of Fort Lewis. And uh, White also, a newly signed uh, member of the Denver Gold from Stanford University. And across the way, James, as we see Norwood uh, teeing it up. Well, you have to think that Craig Morton's a little bit concerned about his defense, but as long as he's been around, uh, he's seen clubs move down the field early before. Now it's a case, as you've indicated, that what will his offense do? And Craig is going to be calling the plays. You know, they asked him, uh, are you going to let somebody uh, call their own? You always wanted to as a quarterback. Now that you're the coach, what are you going to do? He said, I'll call them. So Norwood hits it, and the kickoff is high, coming to... James and he and Stamper and James ends up with it and comes back straight up the middle over the 20 and out to about the 23 yard line. That drive by Birmingham that netted him the first touchdown, nine plays, 84 yards, took him five minutes and 17 seconds and Lane with his touchdown toss to Smith. For Lane, it is his eighth touchdown toss of the year. For Smith, his second touchdown catch. 
and it was a near-perfect drive engineered by Bobby Lane and the Birmingham Stallions. Larry Canada, along with Harry Sidney, are in the backfield for the Denver Gold. The quarterback is Fred Mortensen, number 14. He's out of Arizona State, 6'1 and 193-pounder, and he's not had much playing time this year. Quarterback has been a problem here at Denver with Johnson down and Knopfel traded away. Now going in motion is James and rolling to the left is Mortensen and he's going for the bomb downfield but it's all Stallions nearest the ball. Billy Caesar was down there along with Michael Thomas and Craig Morton brought an ooh and an ah from the crowd even though it was incomplete. He was going for the downs on the first play, Don Heinrich. Yes, and another good thing about that is that Oftentimes in calling plays, people will have a reluctance to want to go deep. They'll keep waiting and waiting and waiting, and then it gets too late. Better to go early, get those defensive corners aware of the threat of going deep, as Durden did there, and even though it did not work, it makes them extremely conscious, and as the game goes along, it gives them a chance to throw underneath them. Second down at 10. The ball is at the Denver 21-yard line. You can see Reed, cornerback, on the left side. He's right up on the line of scrimmage. Mortensen straight back to throw. Has some time and now is wrapped up and dropped. Hitting him was Mike Raines, one of the three captains for tonight's game selected by Birmingham coach Raleigh Dutch. And Raines was right in on top of Mortensen. Well, that's Raines' fifth sack of the season coming from the right side of your screen, 79. You see the twist going on on the inside, but Raines coming right over the top quickly wraps up Mortensen drops him for the loss and he is probably their best pass rusher on that defensive line quite a struggle Rogers a 74 for Denver at 6'4 265 and Reigns at 6'6 and 285 that's a couple of big guys banging each other around and Reigns won that little battle third down and 16 now for Mortensen sends Sydney in motion back to throw dumps it behind the line complete to Canada he's hit behind the line struggles back to the line of scrimmage the 16 yard line and he was brought down by Herb Spencer it'll be fourth down and the Denver Gold unable to move it will be uh, in a kicking situation and dropping back will be Steve Gortz number four punter in the United States Football League he's averaging 40 yards on 58 punts and has had a 59 yarder as his recorded longest of the season this thin mile high air certainly doesn't hurt a punter. Frederick is awaiting the football standing at the Birmingham 45 yard line. Gortz gets it away and a fair catch signaled for by Frederick at the 45 yard line. Birmingham will take over leading 7 nothing and an excellent field position. Number 86 is um, Jim Smith, out of Michigan by way of the Pittsburgh Steelers to Birmingham. He caught a 15-yard touchdown toss, and he certainly, in six games, has had a magnificent career so far for Birmingham. Now, we put him into a, a little comparison with all of the fine receivers in the United States Football League, bearing in mind that the others have played 12 games. Smith has played only six. You can see that how he compares so favorably, Don Heinrich. 4.6 catches per game, 72 yards in average per game, and he's got a second touchdown catch tonight. And we thought we'd kind of highlight Jim Smith for you, show you how he's doing since he came over to the United States Football League, and of course, the the obvious answer is very well thank you that's Johnson in motion for Birmingham Lane with a play action fake quick look to his tight end Mason at the 40 down to the 35 yard line oh what a nice play Don Heinrich it really was a little play action out of the double wing they sent some motion out to the right side to get the defense to move a little bit all it was was Mason releasing outside of Kelvin Newton the linebacker to that side getting into the open area of the zone they were going into the conventional zone so Lane executing well dropped it into him Lane playing with a bad knee tonight as is Daryl Mason there was some question that they would be available that they sure look healthy 19 yards on that pickup down to the 36 yard line and Birmingham leading 7 nothing on the march again there's Talton into the middle of the line and this time he is hit and stopped coming up to make the tackle initially was Gherkin number 50 and they're at the bottom of the pile and you can see him uh, straightening the face mask and unpiling himself also in there big Lavelle short out of Colorado 92 number 59 is uh, Kyle Whittingham and Gherkin 
He's got 107 tackles. He's uh, been a very instrumental man in what has been a very fine defensive unit for this Denver Gold team, but they've been shocked already tonight. They're down 7 nothing, and Birmingham now with a second and eight at the Denver 34-yard line. Lane with a play action. Has a lot of time. He's going long downfield for Smith. Threw it too far, way too far. On defense, Maurice Tyler, and he was uh, double teamed, and Miller was there as well. Well, I tell you, Smith's the kind of a guy that needs a lot of attention, Don Heinrich. Yes, he is. He gets down there in a hurry. Maurice Tyler starting at the free safety in place of the injured Tom Sullivan, who dislocated his wrist last week versus Los Angeles. Actually, uh, the ball overthrown by Lane, and that's where Lane plays it smart frequently. He doesn't give them anything easy. He doesn't put it into crowds too often. His interception rate is low. That time he knew that Smith wasn't there. He just laid it up over the top, but going to work on Tyler, who's new at that spot. That 46% third down conversion rate really tells a lot about the success of this Birmingham ball club. Smith in motion, third and eight, lane to throw. He's going long downfield and throws it away, off the field to play. Frederick was the intended receiver, and David Martin was back on defense, and now the Denver Gold fans, who have been waiting for something to cheer about, let loose with a roar of approval as the defense stymies this talented Birmingham ball club. Now we've got Bollinger coming on. He'll be out to punt it for the first time this evening averaging just under 40 yards of wallop. That puts him in the number six spot as far as punters go. And there's David Martin, who's the number two punt returner in the United States Football League. But I don't know if Martin will get a chance at this. Methinks Don Heinrich Bollinger will be trying to angle this baby out of bounds inside the 10 somewhere. Either the sidelines or go for the little soft squib kick away. He has plenty of time. He's angling it across the way. May have hit it too good. He did. It skips into the end zone, and for the Denver goal, they'll bring it back out to the 20. Denver will take over first and 10 on the 20. Birmingham leads 7-0. A look at the Central Division standings highlights the importance of that uh, Birmingham Tampa, that Michigan-Tampa Bay game of Monday night. And, of course, Birmingham, very important uh, that they come up with a win tonight. Chicago's playing Monday night against the Arizona Wranglers, and uh, what a competitive division that Central is, and it really is up for grabs. Tampa Bay, very important date at Michigan, and Chicago can't really look past Arizona. They're liable to find themselves all jammed up there, back of the Bandits. What a battle that is, and of course you can't forget Boston out in the Atlantic Division either. They're very much in the line for a playoff spot. Going to be an exciting finish as the USFL rolls into its final six games. All right, Denver now, first and ten on their own 20-yard line. Coming in motion now is James. Morton's hands off. And hitting up the middle is Sidney, and he's out to about the 26-yard line. Sidney is the number six running back in the United States Football League. McPherson made the stop. Offensive guard 65, Glenn Hyde, pulling around at that point around the center to step up. Buries the linebacker on his side. Hyde playing with a bad ankle. He missed a week ago. He told Morton he would be ready to play today. They played together at Denver at one point. He said, Coach, I will start tomorrow. So he's playing under a little bit of a handicap, but he was very effective right there. Canada's the lone setback as Sydney is sent wide to the left side now. Mortensen, the quarterback, at his own 26-yard line. Birmingham had that 84-yard drive to go on top 7-zip. Canada, looking for running room, has some squirms up the middle. Finally brought down by Herb Spencer. And he's got enough for the first down as he crosses the 30, and a flag goes down. And there's a little pushing and shoving match going on. Now the two are surrounded by a lot of other people. Sydney was one of the two involved. And a defensive back. And a flag came down. We're going to see about it. Now going to be a personal foul call against Denver. Oh, my. That'll negate the touch of the first down run. Unless it's called a dead ball foul. Craig Morton upset about it, obviously. Well, that hurt. They're had, having oh, really? problems, you know, the first series to get something generated. Again, Glenn Hyde pulling from his left guard spot, came around, picked off the nose tack tackle, Jimmy Walker, and did a good job of logging him back to his left side to open that hole, but it looks like they're going to get caught on that, uh, that little uh, fracas that took place down there. Well, we'll await the official call by our referee to see whether or not Dave Kamansky will give us the word it was a dead ball situation. Going to be called against the offense. His microphone, I think he turned it on. He gave indication he did. We did not see it. It's going to be a... 
Now they're calling it second down from the referee's mic we're told now is inoperative for the evening so we're going to trust us when I tell you we're not talking over him as you look at him and watch his lips move. Uh, Craig Morton was a little bit disturbed as he was talking with one of the officials on the sideline. You notice in the attack of Craig Morton he came out early they ran the sprint out and went deep to drive him off. He came back uh, just with a conventional play. Then he went with like a little quick screen out there. This time he went more to the running game as they ran up the middle with some success and now set back because of the penalty. It's really a strange marking on this too. It's back at the 18. It's called second and 12. Original line of scrimmage was the 26. The carry was out to the 33. They walked off a personal foul up the middle. The pass intended for James batted away by Frank Reed. Also on the coverage over there was Emuel Thompson, who's really become one of the standout corners in the United States Football League. He's really had a hand in that stout Birmingham defense as this season has progressed. At any rate, to get back to that call, personal foul against Denver. Remember, it was a first down at the 20, a second down at the 26, and then Canada carried out to the 33, then they walked off a penalty to the 18 and made it second down and 12. So... Now it is third down and 12. Denver at the 18-yard line. I guess what I'm saying is it was not a dead ball violation or it would have been first down as they walked it back. Mortensen has the back split. 7-0 Birmingham. Sydney on the sweep. Comes inside up to the 25-yard line. A seven-yard pickup, but it's short. And a fight breaking out upfield. And now players are hammering at each other. Flags go down. Involved in this one was Vic James. Everybody getting a hand in it now. Emotions running a little bit high as Craig Morton is out in the middle of it. He knows better than that, particularly to run out there without a headgear. That's the first thing you grab. Craig, a real gentleman, though. He doesn't want his players overreacting. He does want them fired up. They are tonight. And these are two competitive clubs as Raleigh Dotch is pulling some of his players to the side. And the fans kind of like it. They're seeing some real excitement out of their club, and now they're giving them a round of applause. Well, I'll tell you what they're cheering about, Don, is the fact that they're going to lay a penalty on Birmingham. I believe they're going to lay a penalty on Birmingham. That would give uh, Birmingham uh, another chance to play some defense. I believe it would give a first down to Denver, but the fans are enthusiastic. They want to see some, some emotion out of their club, and of course, they get it in the way of a first down via the penalty. They called the penalty on Birmingham's Michael Thomas. He's a first-year pro out of Tennessee. He and James were just toe-to-toe, -to -toe, face mask to face mask, and uh, going at each other. And it ended up with uh, Thomas getting the rap. All right, Denver needs one more player on the field. And running out now, number 80 is... Durden, who was with Birmingham early in the season, and now is with the Denver Gold and Craig Morton. Well, Craig wanted some enthusiasm and emotion. They're getting it. 7 nothing Birmingham. Denver at its own 40-yard line now. Best field position of the night for the Denver Gold. We've got 5-11 remaining first period. Mortensen to throw. Flag downfield. Pass complete to Canada. Dropped at the 35-yard line. Going to be a loss of five and a flag all the way back down at the Birmingham 30-yard line. Well, you know, one thing at that time, Denver chose to go upfield with the pass play, and then Mortensen came off to the back, but not a bad time to call a trap or a quick draw or a draw trap because emotions are high and they get people coming hard. You're liable to split them. Denver had trouble getting number 80, or at least one other player turned out to be Durden on the field. And as a result, that 30-second clock ran out on him, Don Heinrich, and that was the delay of game call. So the ball is at the 35. It is still first down. First and 15. Durden flanked wide to the left side. To the right side is Johnson. Rookie out of Colorado. Canada and Sydney in the backfield. Mortensen gives the ball to Canada, finds a small opening, and bulls his way to the 41-yard line. Billy Caesar is there, number 44. Well, Craig crossed him up. Birmingham came in with their five defensive backs, anticipating the pass. 
they went with the draw play to Canada and he picked up about six yards so oftentimes it is better to get it back a little at a time rather than uh, get greedy and try and go upfield as Craig Morton arms folded looks on sends in the play and hopes for the best execution. 7-0 Raleigh Dutch his ball club leading Denver with the ball on the goal 41. James is set wide to the right. Mortensen, the quarterback, with a second and nine at his own 41-yard line. Too high over the middle for his tight end, Mizelak. Caesar knocked him down, and with everybody who gets knocked down in that secondary now, this Denver Gold crowd is going to want a flag on the play. Well, I think they also felt that Mortensen got hit maybe just a little bit late. Jimmy Walker and Drew Taylor, Drew Taylor being the fourth down lineman for pass rush purposes, had a lot of pressure on. They had a little stunt going between them where they crossed, each of them coming around. They got to Mortensen just as he threw the football, forced him to throw quickly, and that's the main reason he threw the ball poorly. Johnson is in, flanked wide to this our side of the field. Third down and nine for Denver on the gold 41-yard line. Seven nothing Birmingham, 417 remaining, first period. Mortensen to throw. Steps up, gets bumped, and is gonna be dropped back at the 35. Jackie Klein, big rookie out of Alabama, 6'5", 274. Had a big hand in all of the festivities, and Reigns was there as well. And the ball will be back at the 35-yard line, a fourth down and a 15 situation and Denver though they did a bit better this time with that possession finds Gortz back in for a second punt of the night Frederick is awaiting the ball at the 23 yard line Gortz had a 39 yarder the first time Denver's offense has produced 13 yards so far in the game and Birmingham has come up with 106 of course they had 84 on that touchdown drive Gortz hits a beauty Frederick fair catch at the 16-yard line. And boy, downfield, Sydney raced right by him. Birmingham will have the ball on their own 17 when play resumes. Don't miss College Baseball's World Series live on ESPN starting Friday, June 3rd. University of Miami is the defending champions, and what a great collection of eight of the very best of the nation's college baseball teams to go at each other at Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha and ESPN will be there. Join us now, 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, June the 3rd, 3 o'clock Pacific Time. And uh, Bobby Lane walks to the line of scrimmage now at his own 17. He's leading 7 to nothing. Hand off to White. Outside at the 20. Back inside and carries to about the 27. Nice run by Billy White. Lane from the back of the end zone, you see uh, <laughs> Adelette pulling and trapping around. They open the big hole, get good blocking from Battaglia, the right guard, Pat Phoenix, number 71, the right tackle as they collapse it. There's Phoenix, 71, doing a, a good job on Larry White to drive him down the line. And then, of course, with Adelette leading it, they make a nice gain. Second and a yard to go, Birmingham on their own 26. Slipping and falling and rolling upfield. Getting the first down, I believe it'll be out to about the 28-yard line is Talton. Talton looked, uh, not Talton, uh, check that, it's Quarles. It looked as though he fell as he got the handoff. He still had presence of mind to carry the ball forward. Gherkin and Short were there to make the stop. He's over the 28 and very close to the 29, which means he's close to the, and he has by about the length of the football, picked up a first down. First and 10 Birmingham on their own 29. Actually, Quarles, the uh, leading rusher in terms of yardage per attempt at 4.8, as shown by the graphic. White and Talton are the setbacks now. Talton hit behind the line and then finally dropped at the 30. Short put the finishing tackle on him, but he was hit by Larry White behind the line of scrimmage. Craig Morton pacing the sidelines. Thanks, Craig. Now you're useful. You got it, USFL. Now uh, you're oh, useful. Oh, what a clever play on words. <laughs> but the fans love it. They're in Craig's corner and... They like what they've seen, but they want a little more action, a little more scoring. Second and nine, Birmingham. And they're all up there. Ten men on the line. At the Birmingham 30. Lane back to throw with a lot of time. Over the middle, wide open. Anderson spun down finally at the Denver 31-yard line. Martin made the stop, 
and Greg Anderson who had 18 catches coming into the ball game two of which had gone for touchdowns wide open in the middle fine run after he got it it's down to the 31 yard line 39 yards on the pass and run and a good job by Anderson as can be seen he's he leads this club in yards per catch at 16.4 that time he picked off a big gain and that's where Lane's so effective not only with his athletic ability but he reads the defense he saw the blitz the automatic he knew he had man for man coverage came off big gain to Anderson Frederick to the left and Smith to the right Lane at the Denver 31 yard line leading 7 nothing play action back to throw going long downfield for Frederick in the end zone he bumping there along with Tyler no harm, no foul, says the man in the striped shirt. The pass is incomplete, and it'll be back to second and ten at the Denver 31. Lane's hit four of seven now, 86 yards, and he has that touchdown toss of 15 yards that opened up that Birmingham drive, the flip going to Smith for the score. You know, defensive clubs play tendencies of what the offense does. If they like to run on first down, what they like to run, do they choose to throw. Raleigh Dodge frequently changing up. This time, going with the pass deep, drop back out of the first down situation. Second and 10, Anderson to the left, the handoff to Johnson, hit behind the line, and now dropped for the loss at the 35. In there first was big Calvin Turner, number 99. Turner spun him around, and then the rest of the Denver gold was there to make the stop. And the guy that really got pressure on is the linebacker, the left linebacker to that side, Calvin Newton, as the handoff from Lane. You'll see Newton to the right side of your picture pile it up right there. Good adjustment, good balance on it, but then the pursuit gets him as Larry White closes in a hurry. But give credit to Newton. Newton getting his first start came off of their taxi squad development unit. He was put in because they traded John Barfield, their regular starter at that side. Frederick to the right, to the left is Anderson. Smith is setting the slot on the right. Frederick coming in motion, and Lane is back to throw. Third and 13. Pass is complete, caught by Frederick inside the 25, hit and knocked off his pins by Blount. It is short of the first down, but a fine catch by Frederick, who was kind of running crab-like fashion and backing up, backpedaling, and still made the grab. And a the good officials throw. mark it at the 24, gain of 10, it'll be fourth and three. And we've come to the end of the first period. Birmingham leads 7-0, we'll be back after this. It'll be Norwood to try to get three for Birmingham as they're faced with a fourth and three situation. It'll be about a 42-yarder, well within his range. He's longest of the year's 48 yards. He is 16 of 22, and between the 40 and the 49 area, or that range, he's kicked three of eight. Holding will be Bobby Lane. It'll be a 41-yard effort. Line is set. High snap, Norwood's got plenty of foot into it. No good, wide to the right. So Norwood kicks it far enough, but wide to the right. So it'll be Denver's defense holding, and the offense takes over after this. Denver's offense, which has been able to generate only 19 yards in that first period, takes over on their own 24. At halftime, a special guest, Ron Vlanding, who is the owner of the Denver Gold, will come in and visit with us. He has been right in the eye of all the controversy surrounding his franchise here, but with the firing of Red Miller. We're going to talk to Ron Blanding, who has proved to be a very congenial and cooperative owner. In fact, he's anxious to come on with us at halftime. We look forward to it, so stay tuned. All right, quarterback is Mortensen now. That's James in motion. Mortensen is back to throw. Troubled, dumps it behind the line, tried to get it to Canada. And I think, though I can't be sure, I think Dallas Hickman might have got a part of that ball done, Heinrich. It looked like he did get a little piece of it. It was almost a near disaster on the part of Mortensen. Practically a backward pass, almost a lateral. And Canada kind of let the ball go. Of course, he had a better angle than we do at this particular vantage point. But that's one thing that you never want to let a ball that's coming out to the flat that way or in a parallel position from the quarterback roll around in that grass because an alert defensive man is going to jump on it. You never know when it's going to go against you. Indeed you don't. Wide to the left side is Johnny Durden. He played for Birmingham, remember? Durden is flanked wide to the left. Mortensen, the quarterback now. Vince White, number 44, is in the backfield. That's James in motion. Now going in motion, Canada, and it's going to be illegal procedure. Too many men moving, and with the ball carrying it upfield was White, but it'll go for naught. Canada 
was going in motion toward the line of scrimmage and uh, it's going to be an illegal procedure call and the Denver Gold will have to bring it back. Well, Canada played up in Canada at one stage in his career. He might, he might have felt that you could use that forward motion to, that you get out of Canada. He was a fine player for Denver. Uh, did a great job for him while he was there. Kind of a, a journeyman pound out type of a back. One time uh, as a short yardage guy for the Broncos, he scored four touchdowns in four carries over a four-week period. So he touched the ball four times, scored four times. It's going to be a second down and 15. The ball back at the 19-yard line. You can see that Denver's been assessed 33 yards. First downs, Denver's had but one, and that came via the penalty. Sydney, along with Durden, flanked wide to the left now. Mortensen, the quarterback, at his own 19-yard line. Trailing 7-0, we're just into the second period. Sydney in motion. The delay, the handoff to Canada. He's got some running room. That's a good call and a fine run by the veteran Larry Canada, though he is just about a yard short of a first down. Grand Jean made the stop out of the Birmingham secondary. Well, again, Morton crossing him up just a little bit as they go with the draw. Walker, 75, left tackle. He gets taken by it. He's going pass rush as he's chasing Canada on the play. He knows that he got suckered on the draw fake, and that's what the offensive guard wants to do is invite him upfield let him take himself out of it. It worked very well for a nice game. Not quite a yard remaining. It is third in that for a first down for Denver as Mortensen looks over the Birmingham defensive set. And boy, it certainly shows rush, doesn't it? I mean, defense against it. They've got everybody up on the line of scrimmage. An eight-man front. The give to Sidney going outside. He's going to turn the corner, and he's got some speed. But I'll tell you, with some speed, over there to knock him down was Billy Caesar, who made perhaps a touchdown-saving tackle. Well, a guilty party on the force to that side. Fred Mortensen handing off as they go to the right. Everybody's collapsing down on the 6-1. Frank Reed, the safety, gets hooked to the inside, commits a cardinal sin. You want to contain him to the inside. You got the 6-1 defense where they're bunching everything up. All you've got to do is force him back. Caesar, the free safety, very quickly came across, and as you described, saved an even bigger gain. First down for Denver. The ball is at the Denver 40-yard line. 7-0, Birmingham leading. We're just into the second period of play here. A beautiful night in the Mile High City. Flags down, and again, we're going to have an illegal procedure call against the Denver Gold. And it'll um, penalize them five yards, at least from the initial appearance. Craig Martin... Uh, Obviously feeling some frustration. Of course, the, a man who toiled for 18 years as a quarterback in the National Football League knows of the ups and downs of this game. Well, it is frustrating that you're, you're making mistakes with the snap count and people jumping off. I mean, it's a tough enough game at best to try and block people for the running game or to complete passes. But when you get mental errors normally, just for the sake of not sitting in there and listening for that quarterback's count. It is first and 15, Denver. The ball is at the 35-yard line. Kind of a full house backfield. And now going in motion is Johnson. The pitch is back to Sidney, looking for room inside, then outside, and driven to the turf. Boy, he was grabbed by Spencer. And coming over to help out very, very quickly was McPherson. Two very, very active linebackers. They work in tandem quite well, outside and inside on the left side. And they are really a pair to draw to. Little or no gain. In fact, it'll be second and 15 at the 35. Well, Herb Spencer had 15 tackles a week ago or Monday night against Michigan, and he's taken up right where he left off. He's been playing for about the last month with a small bone broken in his right foot, but he's a competitor, and you can see how active he is. As you mentioned, Tom, that uh, he shed the block of Nozolik and then, of course, made the play. Durden is flanked wide to the left side. It is second and 15, Denver, on their own 35-yard line. That's Johnson going in motion. Play action fake. Out in the handoff, and with it is Vincent White. He's in the secondary, drops the football. Denver may have recovered as scrambling for the ball downfield. It appeared to be Johnson who recovered the fumble by White. First down, Denver. Well, good blocking off the right side, pulling Glenn Hyde, who's their number one blocker, 65. Turns up field, misses Spencer at that point, but some excellent running by White, except forgot a little something there. He dropped the ball, but Denver, who has not had a great deal of luck, 
They've had 16 turnovers, uh, 25 interceptions, and 11 fumbles. That was their 12th. So they've lost a lot of those along the way. That time they got lucky and recovered. First and 10, Denver, their best field position. They're at the Birmingham 49. Vincent White at the tailback of the eye. And it's White again. And he spurts into the secondary and is ridden down, grabbed uh, by Freddie Smith out of Auburn, linebacker. White is an electrifying type runner. He was a brilliant football player at Stanford, was very high in the National Football League draft list, and is the newest player signed by Denver owner Ron Blanding. Carry that one to the 42 for a pickup of seven, second and three. Well, I saw him play any number of times there at Stanford, living out in the Bay Area, and he has that excellent quickness. He has the ability to accelerate. He doesn't need a whole lot of daylight. The right side of the offensive line doing a good job, and he took it. And, of course, he's a Colorado high school product, Mullen High School. So he's come back home. Straight ahead, Canada gets to the 40 and close to the first down. He's got to get inside and very near the 39, but he's going to be shy of that. Mark it at the 40, third and a yard to go. McPherson made the stop. Well, Larry Canada sitting there in a single back gets a good block again. Left guard, Hyde, on the trap. Canada, with the good strength, gets a nice hit by the linebacker to that side but comes up just a little bit short. Glenn Hyde, I might add, uh, he's played every spot along that offensive line, so there isn't anything new to him, but he favors that offensive left guard position. Bo Matthews, number 41, veteran blocking back out of Colorado. He set as a wing back on the right side, is in there now for blocking purposes. Here's Canada, first down, then some, still on his feet, inside the 30 to uh, the 35 to about the 32 yard line. Caesar makes the tackle. Once Along again, with McPherson. Once again, a key block by Glenn Hyde. Left guard moving out, cutting off the linebacker, Freddie Smith to that side. The rest of the offensive line, there you see Hyde driving him back, staying after him. He's going to find somebody to hit. And then Hyde, the, I mean Canada, the heavy-duty back, pounds up in there and puts a little hurt on those defensive backs. Seven yards more for Larry. And he now has a first down for Denver at the Birmingham 33. 9-14 remaining, first half. Birmingham leads 7-0 in the gold with their best march of the afternoon or evening. Here's Bo Matthews. Bo's at the 30, at the 25. Well, I tell you, it's good to see an old friend uh, play with that frisky attitude. Bo Matthews, who's had some years on him and some NFL experience with San Diego, and now gets another chance here with the Denver gold and used primarily as a blocking back. Bo's a delightful guy and he really picks him up and lays him Again, down. Again, the left side, Hyde, 65, doing a good job of hitting and turning uh, uh, in that instance. Does a fine job. The left tackle, Steve Rogers, doing a good job. And then Bo Matthews, that's not a new play to him as he starts keying the left tackle's block, then dipped it to the outside, found the crack, and, of course, took it down in there. Billy Caesar using the block tackle, which normally is not a good thing to do, but he had the sidelines there to give him a little help, and it is a first down. Any part of the ball, and that's where it was, and that's Bo saying, that's it, first down. Craig Morton walks the sidelines now, and I might add with renewed interest in this game, his ball club suddenly putting a drive together. They started at their own 24 after a field goal of 41 by Norwood was long enough but wide. 7 nothing Birmingham and the gold making a move. They're down to the 23 yard line. It's a first and 10. Deepest penetration for Mortensen and company. Durden is flanked wide to the left in the slot. James is set outside. Back to throw, Mortensen has some time. Over the middle, pass is complete. James down to the five and down to the four yard line. Brought down by McPherson, and this Denver ball club suddenly begins to sparkle a little bit, Don Heinrich. Well, yes it is, and they set that play up, having run that weak side slant to the uh, slot side. They had uh, two wide receivers to that side. They've run three or four slants over there, off the tackle. They make the fake to Canada, which Mortensen did well. And then Vic James coming underneath on a post type of a move, a shallow post. And once he caught that ball, he had a little bit of running room. I'll tell you, he could accelerate. He showed some speed. Again, we've got Matthews, number 41, set right off the tight end. You see him there as a blocking back. Sydney and Canada are the setbacks. Mortensen, the quarterback, first and goal at the five. Sydney 
hit behind the line and going to be dropped for a loss. Oh, what a fine play. Coming in there, Jackie Klein, giant of a man, 6'5 and 274, played for the Bear at Alabama. Well, Jackie Klein has had some injuries and a ground level look at it. The handoff to Sydney, but Klein getting immediate penetration. He took the inside gap, which you could not see on the screen, but he beat Doug Hoppick, the tackle to his side, hit that gap, got into that secondary, and made a big play as he dropped him for a loss. And that's something he does extremely well. He's not maybe quite as active as you would like for a defensive end, as agile and as quick, but he never stops coming. He's a hard worker, and uh, you know, there's, there's always a place for a football player that gives that kind of effort and just keeps coming, and that's what Klein did there, and it paid off. Second and goal, back at the 10 now. Mortensen has got Durden left and James to the right. His backs are split. At the Birmingham 10, Mortensen lobs it in the end zone. Incomplete. Durden was trying to get around the pressure defense of Thomas, and he couldn't get away from Thomas. Finally, stopped and cut back inside, but couldn't catch up to the ball. Well, Birmingham, that blitzes a high percentage of the time, brought a lot of people, and a good job by Mortensen of reading the defense. The part that hurt him most, and he was extremely unhappy, as was Durden. Durden slapping his head. They went to go with the little fade. Mortensen tried to lay it a little to the inside when he saw the coverage on the outside. Just a little misunderstanding of anticipating what each of them was going to do. They could have had an easy touch. Canada and Sydney now. The backs are split. We're talking third and ten. Third and goal at the ten. Pass complete to the tight end, Nizalak. He's inside the five and is out of bounds. Again, great defense. This time by Frank Reed that kept the big tight end who played his college ball at Colorado out of the end zone. Well, the previous play on the blitz, Nizalak stayed in. This time you see him releasing to the inside of Herb Spencer, who is blitzing. The safety to that side, Frank Reed, a little slow to cover him as he runs the quick out pattern or slant type of a move. So where the time before he stayed in on the blitz to help block, this time he releases, picks up a, a nice gain, and of course with third to about three, paid her to hit. Third and goal, and Birmingham digs in on defense. They lead 7-0. Best drive of the evening for the Denver Gold. Mortensen has the backs in close. Rolling, keeps it. Scampers in the end zone, touchdown. Well, I've got to tell you one thing, Tom Kelly. Craig Mortensen, Craig Morton, I mean, I don't think, when he sent that play into Mortensen, would not have run that himself. The option as he comes down the line, reading the linebacker and the safety, if they don't come up on him, he's gonna turn it upfield. He does, as Larry McPherson, the linebacker, makes the tackle at the goal line, but a shade late. You don't see that option too often, but very effective in the goal line area. 76 yard drive by the Denver Gold, and now we'll try the extra point. It's down, Fieldman hits it, it's up and it's good. So with 7.07 remaining in the first half, the game is tied. Birmingham and Denver, 7-7. Never seen an Arizona State quarterback who couldn't run with the ball. Maybe Mortensen doesn't do it as good as some of them have, but take a look at him. It's a big six. Well, he knows what to do coming down the line. Walker misses him. He outruns him. The moment he sees that daylight, he wasn't going to kid around. He took it upfield, and that's Mortensen's first touchdown rushing for this Denver Gold Club to tie that score at 7-7. Seven to seven. That's his first touchdown period, you know. He only had 18 tosses coming into this game. He has been very, very uh, uh, inactive as the quarterback for this Denver Ball Club. Of course, Johnson is the number one, and he's injured. Naffle was the backup. He's been traded away. And now Mortensen getting a chance to start, and uh, he really is brand new out there. There's Spielman getting set to kick off now for the Denver Gold. They're all tied at seven, and we've got Kincaid awaiting the ball at the five yard. An onside kick, and it squirts out of bounds at the 45 yard line. Nobody, it went the required 10 yards, but nobody in a Denver Gold uniform touched it. Had they gotten a hand on it, they would have been the last to touch it, and it would have been theirs. So an interesting ploy by Craig Martin, but I think the ball's gonna go to Birmingham. Let's well, he, wait and see. The fans wanted some excitement. They're getting it, and as you described it, it would have been Denver's ball. Actually, the covered people on that left side that were going down were so enthusiastic and anxious, they overran it. 
Let me bring up another point now, Don Heinrich. This ball was not touched by anybody. Is it not an illegal procedure and a five-yard penalty and kick it over? As the ball rolls to the left, it just kind of squirts out of bounds, uh, out of reach, unfortunately. I think they're going to kick it over again, Coach. It does look like it's going to go over, and we get another angle look at it as he hooks it to that side. And, you know, the first people down, normally they're looking for someone to block. It barely got 10 yards. Actually, it got 11 yards, but it had so much English on it that it was moving too quickly. It is illegal procedure, Don. They're going back to the 30, and uh, Denver will have to kick it over again. Well, that'll keep the uh, kickoff return team a little bit honest. They'll not be too quick to get back there and set up that wedge or to try to set up a left or right return. It does give Birmingham something to think about. The opening play by Denver, Morton aired it out. He had Mortensen going deep for all the all the yardage, and uh, now he's got an onside kick after getting the game tied. So Craig Morton is debuting with some bag of tricks. In the end zone, Kincaid will touch it down. It'll come out to the 20. A little enthusiasm by the crowd. They like that onside kick attempt, then turn around and kick it all the way into the end zone, about a yard or two deep that they couldn't even bring it back out. The scoring drive, 13 plays, 76 yards. Long time, seven minutes and 49 seconds. Climax with the three yard option play by Mortensen. We've got 657 remaining in the first half and uh, the game is tied at seven as Birmingham takes over now, laying at quarterback on his own 20 yard line. Hand off to Talton, breaks into the secondary and over the 25, out close to the 27 yard line. Bottom of the pile coming up from uh, his Linebacker spot was Newton to get a hand in the tackle. Mark it at the uh, 26. It'll be second and four at the 26. At halftime, Ron Blanding, who's the owner of the Denver Gold, will be our special live guest. We'll be talking with Mr. Blanding about all the hubbub and controversy that surrounded the firing of Denver coach Red Miller. Again, Talton, this time first down yardage over the 30 to about the 31, and Gherkin is there to make the stop. Well, you know Raleigh Dodge has gone back to what they did in that opening drive, and what they do best, uh, really, is uh, run that football. Uh, he was concerned they might get a little flat, and sometimes that'll happen to you. They moved down the field relatively easy in the opening drive to go on top 7 nothing. They missed a relatively short field goal that hurt them there in another drive. So now he said, wait a minute, i got to get that momentum back. This score is tied. We're going to have to go after him. Seven carries, 42 yards unofficially for Talton, and uh, Birmingham has a great first down statistic as they average almost six yards a carry, and now Ken Talton again. Oh, and a good job by Buddy Adelette, the left guard, as he's going to pull around. I don't know if we can get him into the picture on it. Good block up front of it. There's Adelette sealing it off, making a nice play at that point. You know, his wife Becky have it, had a baby on Thursday, a 7.2-ounce baby girl named Miss Mary Lindsay. So congratulations to Becky and uh, certainly Buddy Adelette. I told you, almost six yards a carry on first down situations for Birmingham, and that's exactly what Talton got. Second and four, here's Johnson, breaks into the secondary at midfield, into uh, Denver territory at the 48-yard line, and David Martin got just enough of running back Lonnie Johnson to keep him from scampering for a big one to the end zone. And they open a big hole between Tom Banks and Buddy Adelette on the left side. The right side of your picture there, they get the trap coming across from Mark Battaglia. They seal off the inside, a gigantic hole for Johnson to bring it upfield. A nice cut back there, but just enough of a tackle to drop him. 15 yards on that pickup, and Birmingham on the move again. They started on their own 20. They're at the Denver 48. Lane off the play action, going down the far sidelines. It's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Miller. Miller takes it away from the intended receiver across the way. And that's Anderson. And Denver's defense sets this crowd on uh, its feet. Denver will have the ball. 422 left in the half. Game tied at seven. Well, it was Miller's first interception, the team's 11th, and it couldn't have come at a better time, Don Heinrich. Well, it sure couldn't. And a play that they've been setting up with the long trap, Banks and Adelette blocking down. That was Battaglia pulling across looked like the trap then they wanted to go deep to Anderson 
but Nate Miller playing it perfectly, or Dave Martin playing it perfectly over there. The ball a little short by Lane, and that's where you get hurt, throwing short. That's his 10th interception of the year, and it hurt him. Good defensive play. All right, so after Miller's interception, Denver takes over on its own 21, first and 10. Mortensen, the quarterback, had a 76-yard drive uh, climaxed by a three-yard touchdown run of his own a few moments ago. That's Sidney looking for running room. Good move inside, but he could not get away from the very tough Emuel Thompson, who took the fake inside, stayed right with Sidney, and dropped him right at the 20. No gain at all. Call it second and 10 at the 21. And Denver with 4.04 remaining on the halftime clock with the ball deep at their end of the field as Craig Morton looks on. And the tackle by Emuel Thompson was absolutely perfect. Harry Sidney was trying to give him a few moves out there and juke him to the inside. But he just zeroed in on that belt buckle, stayed right with him because that's not going to move regardless of his legs or his head or his shoulders and dropped him. Durden is flanked to the left and Johnson is set to the right. Mortensen the quarterback. Birmingham showing a seven-man front there as the linebackers jump up in the slots. Back to throw. Mortensen gets hit. Staggers going to be grabbed and downed. The uh, referee, Kamansky, blowing him dead. Don't hit him. He's dead. Back at around the 15-yard line. Walker was in there very, very quickly. As was Jackie Klein from his defensive end spot. It's given third, third and 16 now, and uh, the Denver Gold having some trouble getting on track now. Matheny comes in, new addition to the club. Coming in also, number 81, James. Johnson comes out. Birmingham's got three sacks in the ball game tonight. That big guy right there, Jackie Klein, Awesome, that oh. defensive line. That gives him six and a half sacks for the season. He's just going for penetration, a power rush on Doug Hoppick, the right tackle. Bo Matthews, the lone setback, obviously for blocking purposes. Mortensen's got Sidney in motion. He's going to go to the air. Gets a rush. Downfield, almost intercepted. Billy Caesar had a very good shot at it, and Billy did his utmost to make the interception, but the ball was behind him. He stopped, did a wheel around, and slipped to the turf, couldn't grab the football. And the reason it was behind him was because Drew Taylor at one tackle and Jimmy Walker at the other, their two inside tackles in the rush with their four-man line, really had the pressure on Mortensen and just drilled him as he threw the football. He just let it go. He never saw where it went. So it'll be Frederick back now, awaiting the punt by Gortz, who's standing at his own goal line. Frederick is number five in the United States Football League in kick returns. He's very gifted. He's a fine athlete. Gortz hits a beauty. Down the far side, end over end, bounces at the 49, high in the air, and then goes down at the 47 of Birmingham. So Birmingham will take over. 2.45 to go in the half. We're tied at 7-7. Well, the oldest sport in America, lacrosse, and two of the very best college teams ever to play at Johns Hopkins and Syracuse, perennially among the very best in the country. And lacrosse, uh, no game for the faint of heart, let me tell you. I guess the Indians were playing that long before Columbus discovered the country. <laughs> that is kind of a wild and woolly get-together. It takes some pretty stout hearts oh, to get out there. Some tough people. Take that tell. kind of a beating. Smith is flanked wide to the right side. Anderson and Frederick are set to the left. And Talton is the lone setback now in this Birmingham alignment. They start on their own 47. Smith goes in motion. Lane hands off to Talton, and he is hit after a gain of a couple. In there very quickly was Turner, but the guy that responsible for the tackle was Kyle Whittingham. Calvin Turner fell off very quickly from his defensive right inside. Phoenix working the right tackle 71, but he doesn't really get him upfield. He tried to finesse him and use sort of a, a pass set to get him upfield and turn him outside. Turner was going to have none of it. He was taking an inside move and fell right into the play. Billy White now, one of the setbacks, is back to throw his lane. Has a lot of time. Downfield complete. Caught and dropped at the 31-yard line. Anderson, great reception on defense. Nate Miller had an interception a moment ago to stop a Birmingham drive. And now the Stallions with a big first down at the 31. We've come to the two-minute warning here. Two minutes remain in the first half. We're tied 7-7. The Denver Gold is the best looked at franchise in the United States Football League. And there's part of the crowd that we think will be around 40,000 or thereabouts tonight. At halftime, Ford features the big plays. Tom Mees will recap all of the action, the big plays from last week's USFL action. 
And of course, that includes Monday night. You may get a look at a rather controversial call in the end zone in that Birmingham, Michigan game. First and 10 at the 31. The give is to White. Hit behind the line. Going to be stopped. He was nailed first by Gherkin. As he broke away, Gherkin got some help. As the Denver Gold defensive unit rushed to complement Gherkin's fine initial charge back at the 34, it'll be second and 13. Well, Jimmy Carr, the defensive coordinator and longtime veteran coach, calls the defensive signals. I'm sure he was anticipating that play action pass on first down. He had Gherkin blitzing. Gherkin got penetration before they ever had a chance to get the play started. He guessed right, dropped him for about a two and a half yard loss. Gherkin is a Regis High School product here in Colorado. 107 tackles. Back to throw his lane. Sets deep over the middle. Caught by his tight end, Mason. Oh, and is he a handful to bring down. He attracted most every black shirt in that area, but he's inside the 30 at about the 29. A pickup of five. Third down and eight or thereabouts at the 29. And Birmingham is asking for a timeout. A minute to go in the half, and we're tied at seven. Without overstating the obvious, a very big third down now for both of these clubs. Remember, we're tied at seven, and momentum and uh, would be an important thing to take with you into that dressing room at halftime. Birmingham would like to get some points. Denver would love to turn them aside here. Third down at the 24-yard line, going to be tough on the Denver goal. Well, it is, and uh, the second quarter really has been Birmingham's highest scoring period uh, so far this season they scored 48 in the first period uh, through the year 84 in the second 50 in the third and 32 in the fourth so big difference big play third down and three at the 24 lane hands off and it's going to be no gain by white dropped at the 24 yard line great defensive play by andy perimba now don heinrich we had talked earlier about the great third down conversion rate of this birmingham club almost 47 percent they have not converted a third down in three attempts. Now make it four attempts. And here's Norwood again to try a field goal, a 42-yard effort. And they actually lost about a half a yard on that play. And Raleigh Dodge knows, hey, when you get down there, you take points. We missed a field goal earlier from a fairly similar distance. We got to get one now. Norwood missed a 41-yarder. Here's his try for 42. He's got the distance, but he's wide again. No, he's got it good this time. It looked to me to be wide. What I missed. I thought he made, made the first one he didn't. You're I, permitted a mistake. I, first one this year. The I eyes are going. this one was wide. All right. Norwood <laughs> kicks it through and Birmingham goes on top. They take a 10-7 lead on a 42-yard field goal by Norwood. He's 17 of 24 now. And Birmingham, after getting the ball on their own 47, turns it into a three-pointer and they've got a 10-7 lead. 20 seconds remain in the half. Well, you emphasize the importance of going into the halftime with a lead and some momentum where they started out the opening drive of this football game, marched down the field, made it look easy, looked like it was going to be a runaway if that was any indication. But then Denver, stiffening up on defense, forced, uh, forced the Birmingham Stallions to have to punt it away several times. Then they went down, scored once themselves. And since that time, their offense has been uh, fairly solid. Their defense has been very good. So... Three points is big at this stage for the Stallions. The kickoff now, some people who can run it back. It's a low bouncer that comes to Stamper, picks it up on the second bounce. This kid is awfully quick, trying to get outside, gets to the 25, and down he goes. 14 seconds remaining in the first half, and we'll see now about the Denver offense. Grand Jean made the stop. Six plays, 39 yards, the field goal of 42 by Norwood to give Birmingham its three-point advantage as we're nearing the end of this first half. I want to remind you, Ron Blanding, the owner of the Denver Gold, has agreed to come by and visit with us at halftime. And, of course, we'll be talking about what everybody's been talking about, the controversy around uh, the firing of Coach Red Miller, Morton being hired, and uh, his battles with the media here in Denver and the surrounding uh, area. That should be very interesting, Tom. I'm sure you've got some good questions that is going to be uh, interesting to the fans as well. First down at the 25-yard line for Denver in just a handful of seconds. This is Bo Matthews on the sweep. Bo head down out to the 32-yard line, a gain of seven. Second and three, seven, six seconds, and what appears the clock is going to run out. Don't forget the big plays are coming up at halftime as well. And there's the gun. That ends the first half of play. A surprisingly good one, a very tough, tenacious effort by this Denver club. At halftime, Birmingham 10, Denver 7.
Have you driven a Ford lately? Ford and your local Ford dealer will invite you to see the 1983 Ford Cars and Trucks present the USFL, the big play. Let's go to the Pontiac Silverdome. Last Monday night, Birmingham at Michigan. Second quarter, the Panthers trailing at home 10-0. Little quarterback Bobby Hebert makes a big throw and a big play here by Anthony Carter. Number one, off the hands of the defender. Carter hacks on to narrow the gap to 10-7. Birmingham still in front. The cheerleaders love it in Pontiac. Later in the second quarter, Anthony Carter back to receiver Birmingham. Punt goes from hero to goat. He fumbles it. Lonnie Johnson recovers for the Stallions. And the Stallions take advantage of this turnover as they did all three turnovers in the first half. Monday. Bob Lane to Greg Anderson. Touchdown. Birmingham increases the lead to 17-7. But the Panthers come back in the third quarter. This one-yard TD plunge by John Williams ties it up at 20-all. Now we move to the final minute of play in regulation. Birmingham on the drive, which they hope will be the game winner. Bob Lane looking long for Ron Frederick. And the ball is intercepted by Fred Logan. He rolls into the end zone, tries to spike the ball. Hey, Fred, the ball is still alive. But Daryl Mason of Birmingham makes a heads-up play, covers it. The official signals, touchdown Birmingham. But they got together later, about three or four minutes later, changed the play. Michigan got possession. Neither team could score in the last minute of regulation. Raleigh Dodge says, hey, we should have won the game. Didn't work out that way. But in the overtime, Scott Norwood put an end to all the speculation. 46-yard field goal, winner. Birmingham beats Michigan 23-20 in overtime. Then last Sunday afternoon, Mile High Stadium in Denver, the gold taking on the LA Express in a Pacific Division battle. The fans are mad about the firing of Red Miller. No doubt about that. And I guess the Denver defense was mad also. They come out smoking. The guys in black and gold come up with an early interception of a Mike Ray pass. That's David Dumars. He intercepts, and it looks here like he goes all the way for the touchdown, but he stepped on the sideline and about the 30-yard line out of bounds, so it wasn't a touchdown, but it was still a big play for Denver because that set up their first TD of the ballgame. Quarterback Alvin White back to pass, hits running back Harry Sidney across the middle, 32 yards for the score. The goal take a 7-0 lead in the first half. Meanwhile, the Express, well, they were playing more like a local. Big tight end Ricky Ellis, one of the leading receivers in the league. He's wide open on a fourth down play. Nobody around him looks like a touchdown. He drops the ball. Then later on in this first half, Vince Abbott badly shanks a field goal attempt, and the Express just can't put any points on the board in the first half. But the second half, L.A. played very well. Good catch coming up by recently signed Anthony Allen. Mike Ray has all day to pass, finds Allen inside the 25. Allen gets nailed but hangs onto the ball. That set up a TD pass. Mike Ray to John Barnett, 19 yards, and we're tied up in Denver at seven apiece. The goal went ahead 10-7 on a field goal, but a big play coming up here for L.A. Third down, blitz is on. Mike Ray beats the blitz as he finds Wilbert Hazlitt. Hazlitt gets it all the way down to the six-yard line of Denver. And then running back John Barnett goes over for the winning touchdown. L.A. wins a real gut-wrencher in Denver. Final, the Express 14 and the goal 10. Then the Boston Breakers and the Washington Federals last Sunday afternoon, RFK Stadium, nation's capital, first quarter. Johnny Walton of the Boston Breakers had a good day. Not very many people showed up to watch the game, though, just over 7,000. Here in the first quarter of play, Walton hooks up with a speedy Frank Lockett. It's a rainy, muddy day, but Lockett hangs on, 7-0 Boston. In the second quarter, though, Washington quarterback Mike Hohenzee, who's really putting some points on the board the last couple of weeks, finds former Boston Breaker running back Billy Taylor. Some great moves by Taylor. He goes 46 yards for the touchdown, and the Federals at home have tied Boston by a count of 7-7. With four minutes uh, to go in the first half, Honesy finds Mike Holmes over the middle. Holmes makes the catch and watch the maneuvering across the middle of this muddy field. 34 yards for the touchdown. And at halftime, Washington led Boston 14-7 to the fourth quarter. It's 14-13. Washington hanging on by the skin of their teeth. Honesy back to pass. Picked off by linebacker Mike Brewington, who returns the ball back to the Washington Federal 34-yard line. That with seven minutes left in the game. And then quarterback Johnny Walton. Little play fake. Fakes to his right. Pump fake there and finds Charlie Smith wide open. Touchdown. 39 yards. Two-point conversion good. The Boston Breakers stay alive in the chase for the wild card playoff spot. They beat Washington 21-14. Last Sunday evening, Sun Devil Stadium, Tempe, Arizona, Philadelphia Stars looking for their eighth win in a row against the Arizona Wranglers. 52-yard pass play early for Philly, the team in red. Quarterback Chuck Fusina hooks up with Willie Collier. The youngster at the University of Pittsburgh makes a good run across the middle of the beautiful turf there in Arizona. That set up a Kelvin Bryant touchdown. One of two on the night for number 44. Bryant, of course, the league's second leading runner. 12 weeks into the season, early second quarter. 
Arizona back to pass. Alan Risher looking over the middle of the field. It's tipped and intercepted by Scott Winner. Winner, of course, the former All-American from the University of Georgia. That set up another Philadelphia touchdown as quarterback Fusina, number 14, would fade back to pass and look for Tom Donovan, his old teammate at Penn State. Donovan makes the catch in the end zone, 20 yards in a TD, 14-0 stars. With a score 14-7, third quarter, Philly again on the drive. It's again Fusina to Willie Collier for 10 yards. And then Kelvin Bryant, who ran for 106 yards in this game, Picks up another 15 yards, picking his way downfield. He's a slashing type of runner. You really don't get a good hit on Kelvin Bryant. That set up Bryant's second touchdown of the night. One yard dive, and Philly wins its eighth in a row, 24-7 against Arizona. The Oakland Invaders invaded Tampa Stadium last weekend to battle the Tampa Bay Bandits. First drive of the game, 80-yard drive. Mike Kelly, the quarterback for Tampa, to Eric Trevelyan, 21 yards. Trevelyan, a nice run, nice maneuvering, touchdown. Bandits lead it 7-0. Later on in the first half of play, Kelly over the middle to Danny Bugs. This is second quarter action now. 18 yards for Bugs, the former National Football League veteran. That puts the Bandits in good position in Oakland territory. Now, watch this perfect pass play over the middle. Again, Kelly, the youngster from Georgia Tech, to Willie Gillespie, 16 yards, touchdown. Bandits led it 17 to three at halftime. Second half, former NFL All-Pro tight end Raymond Chester goes out for a pass here for Oakland. Fred Bassana. Looks around, got plenty of time, finds Chester. Chester is nailed about the helmet. He had to be taken off the field on a stretcher. And fortunately, it was nothing more than a strained neck. So it looks like Raymond Chester will be playing some more football this season. Let's hope so. Bandit defense was also tough on this night. Fred Bassana sacked here by nose tackle Ron Simmons, big number 50 of Tampa Bay. And a great effort here by little Greg Boone. Who says little guys can't play football? The game has already salted away, but Boone, does he quit? No, he smells that goal line. You think he's down? Guess again, Greg Boone, touchdown, Tampa Bay, victory over Oakland, 29-9, last Saturday in Tampa. Then, of course, the Chicago Blitz and the New Jersey Generals last Sunday afternoon at Giant Stadium. We'll pick it up first quarter, fourth and goal, New Jersey, Herschel Walker, touchdown, New Jersey, the Generals lead it 7-0. The Blitz come back in the second quarter. Greg Landry drops back, dumps it over the middle to little Lenny Willis, who makes a big play, goes all the way for the touchdown. We're tied at halftime at seven apiece. Early fourth quarter, big loss for the Blitz. Landry completes the pass to Wayman Bugs, yes, but Landry goes down with a fractured ankle, and Greg Landry is out for the season. Ten to seven, Blitz, and the Generals come right back. They run the reverse. Walter Tullis, big play here. He has some daylight and runs down to the 40-yard line of the Chicago Blitz. From there, you give it to your big play man, Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker finds a gap, runs in from 25 yards out, runs over the defensive back here. The PAT no good. The Generals had a three-point lead, 13 to 10. Costly play for New Jersey, though. Herschel, well, he turns the ball over. Trying for that extra yard, he fumbles. Lance Shields recovers on the New Jersey eight-yard line. From there, the Chicago Blitz were stalled, so they had to settle for a field goal from Frank Corral. It's good from 35 yards out. We're tied at 13. We go to overtime. In the overtime, quarterback Tim Cagle replacing Greg Landry. Throws a bomb here to Trumaine Johnson down the right side. Watch how Johnson pushes out the defender, gets open, no flag. George Allen decides to go for the field goal to win the game in OT. We got the field position, go for it. Corral lines up, Cagle, the holder. Cagle takes off for the football. He runs into the end zone, touchdown. Chicago Blitz, win it in overtime against New Jersey, the final, 19-13. Have you driven a Ford lately? Ford and your local Ford dealer who invite you to see the 1983 Ford Cars and Trucks have presented the USFL, The Big Play. Now let's go to Denver. Tom Kelly and the owner of the Denver Gold, Ron Blanding. 10 to 7, Birmingham leads Denver here at halftime before the players take the field for the second half. A chance to visit with the owner of the Denver Gold, Mr. Ron Blanding. We thank you, first of all, for coming by. Hey, thank you. You became a national celebrity about 10 day days ago, and Mr. Blanding fired one of the most popular of all Denver coaches, Red Miller. I, ex I expected that you expected media coverage in town to be kind of against you, but did you think you'd become a national figure over that? Well, we, uh, we thought we'd have a lot of problems when we did that, but we thought that was the right thing to do for the Denver Gold, and we wanted to change the direction of the Denver Gold, and that's what we did. Do you think the media has given you a fair shake, Ron? Well, you know, they got to do whatever they think is right. We, uh, I don't want to be critical of them. Uh, they, did, uh, they did what they thought. One of the criticisms I've read about you and your ball club is that you have failed to go out and get some top-flight football players. Is that a fair criticism? Well, we signed a good one the other day in uh, Craig Morton. Yes, you did. Uh, <laughs> plus, we got Vincent White last week, and uh, 
uh, we'll be signing more and more players right now, so uh, we'll get in good shape here pretty quick. And you've made some other reorganizational plans, namely you've got Fred Gerke in now in uh, a special role in your front office. Yeah, it's nice to have Fred. Fred's always been a good friend of mine, and he'll do a good job for us. We're, we're very glad to have him. You've had great fan acceptance here. We sure have. Uh, it's been great, uh, and uh, it'll continue. Uh, we'll get this thing going pretty good, and everything will be fine. And you're going to have the championship game uh, July the 17th? Yeah, that's really great to have it the first year. It's really going to be accepted here, and it, it'll be a great thing. Everybody will remember that for a long time to come. Thank you for coming by. I know it's not easy to be focused in on, but you've come by and come through it like a champion. We appreciate your efforts. We want to thank you very much for spending these moments with us. Hey, thank you for inviting me. And good luck with the franchise. Thank you very much. Ron Blanding, the owner of the Denver Gold. It's 10-7. Birmingham leads, but only by three at halftime. Here's Don Heinrich. Well, the possessions in the first half. Of course, the opener. Birmingham drove downfield 84 yards, uh, culminating in the touchdown. And then uh, the defense of the Denver goal stiffened up forcing him to punt good field position on that punt they got nothing out of it then they came down starting at their own 17 drove 59 yards missed a field goal a crucial at that point and then starting from their own 20 it was four and out and of course uh, the last possession they went 29 yards starting again in good field position at their own 47 and put three more on the board to go ahead 10 to 7. Denver on the other hand had not good field position in the first half. The first couple times out backed up around the 20 yard line they had to punt the ball away then the third time they took it 76 yards in 13 plays the option play going over for the touchdown was Fred Mortensen an excellent drive then again they fell back had to punt the football away and then got just one play before the half they decided to kill the clock with that one and of course went in trailing 10 to 7 so as the clubs are back out on the field they're getting ready for the kickoff here in the second half Denver is lined up to go the Birmingham Stallions kickoff coverage teams is ready Tom so uh, it's all yours big fella thank you Don Norwood will be kicking off and Scott Stamper one of the newest additions of this Denver Gold uh, football team and a real uh, speed burner they have uh, told us standing at the five yard line certainly some people back there who can run with it Vincent White one of the newest additions. He's a, a real pick him up and lay him down type guy. Number 44 and uh, James, who is also fleet of foot. Norwood to kick off. It is his field goal of 42 yards that is the difference between these two football teams. Each has taken advantage of a long drive to put touchdowns on the board. And Norwood's field goal, after missing one of 41, he hits one of 42, and that's the margin as we await the start of the third period. Again, we want to thank Ron Blanding owner of the Denver Gold for taking moments to come by and visit with us here at halftime. He certainly was the, the focus of attention around the league, but he apparently has taken it quite well. He'll weather the storm. Very successful businessman. Boy, Norwood just about hit it out of the county. <laughs> Did he ever? Boy, off the back end of the end zone, and Denver will bring it to the 20. It'll be a touchback and a first and 10 for the Denver Ball Club on the gold 20-yard line. Fred Mortensen, who completed three of nine for 25 yards and scored the only touchdown, a three-yard run on a keeper play, climaxing a 76-yard drive, comes out to quarterback the ball club. Now, lest you're critical of Mortensen, remember he was no better than the third-string quarterback, and they've had some shuffling around in that department. Johnson, of course, their number one is injured. Knaffel was traded away. In fact, he's going to be starting. He's back east now. So Mortensen has taken over. And he's just really getting his playing legs under him. Back to throw to start the third period. Going to get sacked and wrapped up at the 15. Mike Reigns in on top of him. Rogers number 74, who might have done something about keeping Reigns off the back of his quarterback, just kind of hitched up his pants and said, I'll get you next time, big guy. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. He about gave him pneumonia. He went by him so quick. Reigns being their top pass rusher, that was his sixth sack of the year. And he went in there and jumped on Mortensen before Mortensen even had a chance to set up. But Craig Morton, not wasting any time despite being on the 20. He was going to come out firing. So we've got Mortensen now at his own 15-yard line. Second down and 15. Third period just underway. Denver with its opening possession. 10-7. They trail Birmingham. The linebackers stunting in and out. Mortensen to throw, comes out on the side to Sydney, and Sydney can't hang on. It was a tough catch, coming out of the backfield, turning back for the ball. McPherson out there. I'd like to see him get Sydney one-on-one. -on -one. This kid out of Kansas, who was a quarterback in the wishbone offense under Don Fambro down there at Kansas for the first two years, and then 
went to fullback as a blocking back in the I formation, then finally got to carry the ball as tailback. And briefly, is an outstanding talent. He now comes out of the ball game now, and uh, going in is Vincent White. So it's third and 15 at the 15-yard line as Craig Morton looks on. Vincent White is a smallish back, about 5'8 and 175 to 180. Teammates were calling him money bags on the sidelines in practice yesterday. Newest addition to the club. Long count by Mortensen. Boy, I don't think he got it away. He didn't. He ran out of 30-second time. Mortensen. Well, Don Heinrich, you played quarterback the National Football League and with a great deal of brilliance during your career. 25 years or so you've spent around this game and 15 of them under center. I suppose a guy just in there, is, he's got some problems. He's trying to read a defense, trying to think, well, has he called the right play? He's got a lot of things going through his mind, doesn't he? Well, he certainly has, and you've expressed that he has not played a great deal, has had not a lot of game experience. That time, Birmingham was faking the blitz. Mortensen was trying to read that defense, come off to a different play with all the jumping around that was going on in there, and he just took a little too much time. You've got to read it quick and get it conveyed to your receivers in a hurry well he's got receivers wide right and left four men out one lone setback it's third down and 20 now they're showing blitz boy spencer juking in and out of the line mortensen to throw needs a big one downfield he's got a man durden durden can't get it at the 40. oh what an effort well i'll tell you what mortensen went to the white right, right receiver there's five defensive backs across the board if you count them from right to left, actually six in this case. They brought in a sixth defensive back. They called a dime. There he comes downfield. The guy, Mike Hatchett, has got him fan, man for man. They had him double covered to the outside, but Hatchett, who is responsible for that inside zone or man for man on the slot when they went with three wides, let himself get beat. A cardinal sin, he dodged a bullet. Very lucky. Gorts to punt and back downfield. We've got Frederick awaiting the return. He's at midfield. You think Durden didn't want to catch that against his former teammates? Boy. The snap to Gortz. He's in the end zone and just does get it away. Gets knocked down, but no flag. Frederick at the 45 to midfield to the 46-yard line. So Birmingham with great field position and a lead. Birmingham 10-7, and they'll take over. So you want to be a kicker in pro football in the end zone. Gortz gets the snap and watch what he has to do. Well, the pressure coming from the inside. Some people might wonder why that is not roughing the punter, but actually the up back, as you could see from the left, got the block and of course forced the rushing defensive lineman, knocked him into the kicker. So really it, uh, it is not a roughing the punter call. Good field position. Frederick did the best thing he could do. Took it straight back up the field in a hurry. And that's the 47-yard line, and it's first and 10 Birmingham. They lead 10-7. Lane hands off and running right into the heart of that Denver defense, and that'd be big. Number 99, Calvin Turner, was Lonnie Johnson. You talk about the irresistible meeting the immovable. Boy. Well, again, Adelette pulling across, but <laughs> they have a little stunt going from that side and of course Turner just drives right on into it Pat Phoenix 71 who you saw in the view there is saying wait a minute you're not supposed to take an inside slant on me I wanted to drive you back open up that trap hole it is second down and 10 at the 47 Birmingham with the ball leading by three and Lane is back to throw look at the time pass complete Smith down at the 30 yard line and on the tackle David Martin but Smith, rather easy catch, and all the time in the world for well, as, Lane to throw it. As Smith comes down, he gets a little outside move, then just turns slightly inside of Dumars, a strong safety. He's covering the up area of the zone. He doesn't know Smith is turning in behind him. He's counting on help from that corner to say, going in, going in, inside, hook move. But Smith was there, and a nice throw by Lane. He's wide to the left. Here comes a blitz by Denver, and Johnson breaks the line of scrimmage and is brought down at the 28. Denver coming with a blitz. And uh, Lonnie Johnson got, oh, a couple. They'll mark it at about the 28, maybe even the 27. Second down for the Birmingham Stallions, who are on a hot streak. They've won five in a row. The last time these two teams met, Denver won it 9-7 on a 50-yarder field goal, that is, by Spielman. 
with just six seconds to go in that football game. Since then, Denver has not won a game, and Birmingham has come on with five in a row. And the Stallions are really hot. And now they lead 10-7. They've got the ball at the 27-yard line, second down and seven. And the give to Lonnie Johnson cuts back to the 25. Pretty good pressure. Paremba made the stop, but Gherkin, Don Heinrich, unless I saw it wrong, came in and really forced Johnson right back inside. Yes, he did. Mark Battaglia, the right guard, number 59, was pulling from right to left. Gherkin was penetrating, and he met the he met the trap move by Battaglia very strong, dropped the shoulder, had good leverage, and forced it back where the pursuit could get it. 31 yards on seven carries for Lonnie Johnson, who really is an all-purpose back. He does a lot of things for Raleigh Dutch's club. Lane to throw. Almost intercepted. Pass intended for Mason, the tight end. Over there very quickly was Dumars. Davis got six interceptions out of the 11 turned in by this gold defensive unit. Dumars has been the most active in that regard. That the toss by Lane was not too artistic, and Mason really had little chance to get it. Dumars had the best shot at it. He really didn't have that big a chance. Well, we're going to have Norwood try still another Another 42-yarder by Norwood. He hit one prior to the end of the half that put his team on top by three. He's missed one from 41, so here we go. The snap, and it's down. Again, he's got the distance. And again, it's good. So Norwood, one of the most prolific of the kickers in this league, makes it 13-7 to Birmingham. Norwood, who's 18 of 25 in field goals, kicks off. Stamper out of the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. It'll be a touchback in Denver first and 10 at that point. This Norwood now has hit two out of three tonight and his second 42-yarder. This kid's a fine-looking kicker, Don Heinrich. Uh, two, six plays, 22 yards, and he gets the 42-yard uh, field goal, and now 13-7 Birmingham. Well, the Denver defense toughened up after... Birmingham had excellent field position at that 47-yard line. They moved the ball for a couple of first downs, a big play uh, pass from Lane to Smith, but then they couldn't move it on the ground as the defense did tighten up. James is flanked to the left and Durden to the right. We've got Vincent White as the eye back or tailback in the eye formation. Mortensen, the quarterback, at his own 20. Sends James in motion, the give to White, and the little guy slides forward to about the 24. Now, White is listed at 5'8 and 190. And at that size, it is easy to overlook him. <laughs> well, the guys on defense don't. They know that he's a little fire plug out there with excellent quickness. And, you know, at 5'9, at as you said, and almost 200 pounds, he's a compact guy. And you try and hit him high, you're going to bounce off him. Yet he has the quickness to change direction. 13 to 7, Birmingham, second possession of the third period for the Denver Gold. And Mortensen, the quarterback. Needs to put a drive together. Birmingham shows a seven-man front. Now the linebackers drop back out again. On the delay, the handoff to Canada. He's over the 25, out to the 28. Walker makes the stop. In there also was McPherson. Jimmy uh, Walker out of Arkansas, 6'3", 260-pounder. He was with the LA Express when the year started, and uh, they cut him. He was a leading tackler in that defensive line going into this game with 68. And he did a good job there playing off of Tom Davis, the offensive center, and then moving in to make the play. Third down and a long two at the 28-yard line. Denver has not converted a third down in four tries. Mortensen hands off to Sydney flag down and Sydney is dropped as he tried to cut slipped and fell at the 25 in there on top of him was Rick D'Amico very active linebacker and a flag on the play gonna have an offside called against Birmingham and that's going to give the Denver gold a new lease on life and a first down well that's one thing Denver has done during this five game winning streak is not made many costly errors they had their share of penalties We'll get the call. Well, apparently, Don, we're having trouble with Dave Kamansky's mic. Yeah. Yes, he his doesn't seem to be working. But you know, everybody's going to get penalties. It's a matter of when they come and if you get hurt. In this instance, it keeps a drive alive when Denver is having a little bit of trouble here, second possession in the third quarter, to get the ball moving. D'Amico made the stop. 
the tackle was called for being offside. So it's first down Denver at their 33-yard line. I formation, James in motion. Play action, Mortensen gets a rush. Steps up, may run it. He's got some room. Oh. Hold it. They're oh. going to call him dead at the 25-yard line. And you know why? Oh, my. Frank Reed, the strong safety, was blitzing, and they didn't have him picked up. And despite the fact that he went in clean, Mortensen stepped inside of him. Craig Morton, very irate on the sidelines, and that always goes back to the official that it's a judgment call, and in that instance, a terrible judgment by the official, because really, Mortensen, you'll see Frankie Reed coming in from the right, and Mortensen steps up. Now, there's no way that Reed would have gotten him, but the official in the back, in order to protect the quarterback, said, no, he was down, and that's reason enough for Craig Morton to be unhappy, and I don't blame him. Well, it's quite obvious that the replay showed that Reed did not have Mortensen. Ball goes back to the 25. Tough call for Kamansky. Canada pulling his way over the 35 to the 36-yard line. D'Amico, one of several, there to make the stop. Also coming up, Billy Caesar. Really a very, very tough call for Kamansky. And if he had the benefit of instant replay, he would have swallowed his whistle <laughs> because Reed never did have a legitimate grab on Mortensen. Well, he certainly didn't in the normally very mild-mannered. Craig Morton showing his competitive spirit on the sideline says, there is no way that that man had him down or in his grasp as the rule reads. Third down and seven. The ball is... Um, Call it third, yeah, third down and seven at the 36-yard line. Big play time for Mortensen now. Birmingham showing almost an eight-man front. Mortensen to throw, steps up, looking, goes long downfield for Durden, and it is incomplete. Oh, what a battle between Caesar and Durden at the 15-yard line, and Caesar won that contest. And they've done that a few times in practice when they were teammates down in Birmingham. A nice job by Mortensen. Good protection. As he drops back, you see the cup in front of him. Now he'll step up as the pressure goes around him, the offensive line moving him back. He lays it out over the top, unfortunately a little back to the inside. Had it been to the outside, there might have been a chance that Durden could go for the ball, but again, a, just a tad short, and Caesar getting a hand in. And now Gort's in to kick it away for the Denver Gold. High snap, steps up and hits it. Good kick. End over end. Frederick, great returner, fumbles it through his legs. The ball is on the turf. Scramble for it in a huge pileup. I believe that Denver might have recovered that one. If I were to just take a guess, they had it for a moment. I tell you, Frederick made an awful good effort to get it back. We'll see how it turns out. You can bet one thing. There's a lot of pulling and tugging going on underneath that pile. Indeed. Aha, I called one right for a change. Denver has the ball at about the 15-yard line. And that crowd can tell you that they got that football. Big break for the goals at this point, and a costly error on the part of the Birmingham Stallions. Right there, the ball drops down. He loses it. He doesn't know where it is. Now he sees it. He goes for it. Good hustle. First man down. Second man in Birmingham. He goes. They overrun it. Another Birmingham man. Now everybody into the pile. And when I say they're tugging on that football underneath, you need some arm strength because everybody is trying to jerk it away from the guy that has an arm lock on it. Napton is the guy credited with the recovery, and they're going to mark it at the 11-yard line. Great field position, quite obviously, for the Denver Gold. They're down 13-7. to seven. Birmingham's Good. turned it over twice. The other time was the interception. Good chance for play action. Mortensen with the roar of this crowd still ringing in his ears back to throw fires it out in the flat too high for Nizelek is tight in let me go back a moment ago to Kamansky the referee and of course unless you know let me explain that that rule don't hit him he's dead is in there expressly to protect the quarterback to keep a guy from grabbing him standing him up and letting everybody attack him as though he was a, a free lunch counter and so the referee acting in good faith really blew the play dead thinking that he was saving Mortensen from undue punishment or perhaps serious injury as it turned out he blew the whistle too soon but that can happen that time Frank Reed again strong safety blitz was in Mortensen's face forcing him to throw the ball high to the Zolik. second down and 10 at the 11 straight ahead Sydney fights his way gets to the five yard line 
He was hit hard by Caesar and McPherson. But Harry Sidney, a hard running back out of Kansas, carries to the five. It'll be third down and five yards to go at the five. Sidney's the number six rushing back in this uh, United States Football League. He has only 24 yards and six carries. And one of the problems with the Denver offense has been they've not gotten the ball to this young man much in recent games, Don Heinrich, and he's a, a very important running back. And they go with a two tight end offense right now. They bring in Daryl Gooseby, their backup tight end. Mortensen on the keep. He's at the five. He's in the end zone. Oh, -ho! he got him with the option again. I've never seen an Arizona State quarterback that couldn't run with the ball, Don Heinrich. Well, you said that once, and I'll tell you what, he just verified it because the first time obviously was not a mistake as Mortensen for the second time tonight and the second time this year or in his career coming down the line he sees a little crack gets a nice block to the inside a little bit late by Larry McPherson the linebacker trying to make the play another angle and this time Mortensen going into the end zone as Harry Sidney picks up the block on McPherson no hesitation on the part of Mortensen went for the six points two touchdowns this evening so the game now is tied and we'll see about Denver going on top Spielman will try for the extra point and it's up in the air and it's good so with 7-13 remaining in this third period Denver turns the break into seven the goal 14 Birmingham 13 at possession was a fumble on the 11 start on the 11 Monday night should be some kind of an exciting evening in the United States Football League and here on ESPN we've got Tampa Bay up at Michigan and what an important contest that'll be and of course Chicago playing host to Arizona Chicago's got a new quarterback Scott in the trade with New Jersey George Allen losing Greg Landry Al Risher has got all kinds of touchdowns and Arizona beat the Chicago Blitz early on in the year and of course it's a real scramble in that central division Tampa Bay on top Chicago a game back Birmingham and Michigan two back and I tell you Birmingham now is a point back and a very very important ball game for the Stallions right now as the gold kicks off in the end zone Kincaid bobbles it touches it down and the ball will come out to the 20 and it'll be first and 10 for Birmingham at that point once again uh, <laughs> a little uh, extracurricular activity going on down in the field as Raleigh Dodge arms folded looks on three plays total yards uh, there has to be some discrepancy in that tap by the five yard run they started that drive was not the recovery at the 11 yard Indeed line Indeed, it was the ball was kicked it was taken over by Birmingham en route to that they fumbled it recovered at the 11 so it is three plays 11 yards on that touchdown drive Mortensen putting his team on top 14 13 now we'll see about Birmingham as they take over on their own 20 yard line lane to throw with a lot of time and over the middle to his tight end and Mason is what a tough customer at the 30 wrestled about before he's finally down lying right across that 30 yard line stripe Miller was there number 23 and you see big number 55 Putt Choate who leads this Denver Gold Club in defensive tackles 38,829 the best looked at team in the United States Football League and of course you know there's a storm of controversy here in Denver over the firing of Red Miller but that will disappear tonight if Craig Morton debuts as a winner and Man. he's up by one it Man's is now a winner first and ten at the 30 that's white with it turns the corner he's got five hustled out of bounds driven out by Tyler but a nice gain by Billy White we've told you I think but it bears repeating he comes by his athletic prowess quite naturally his father an outstanding Major League Baseball player for the St. Louis Cardinals and then of course the Yankees In fact he does the Yankee games now Bill White well Pat Sandin is in there at the right guard replacing uh, Mark Battaglia I believe I called him Battaglia earlier in the game Battaglia we don't know what the injury is or whether Raleigh Dotch just wants to give him a little breather Lane with a second and three the ball is at his own 37 yard line hurtling to the 40 yard line is Lonnie Johnson and again on top of him there short number 53 coming up on defense is Calvin Newton coming off that right side once again just kind of a slip block at that point uh, between the center and the offensive left guard not much there 
as the defense closes it in a hurry, they jumped into it quickly and shut it down with a gap angle move that uh, knowing Birmingham likes to run that football, decided to gamble and it worked for him. Skabinski's come in to add some blocking strength that is third down in inches and a first down as Talton barrels straight ahead, getting a nice rush by the offensive line on the left side. You've heard Don Heinrich refer to the likes of Bob Woods and Buddy Adelette. Banks, of course, the veteran center. They move things around pretty good in there, and there's Talton for the first down. Yes, and Talton normally running from the halfback position, uh, just a power play. They pulled again, Sandin, from right to left, a little bit of a quick trap type of a move. Earl Gant, their normal starter that had a good game against Michigan, uh, came up lame prior to the ball game, so he didn't suit up. They're a little short of backs out there tonight. Denver on top by one. Third period action in Birmingham's lane in the backfield. Tries to set up a screen to Johnson. Great defense by the goal. Initially, Greg Gerken. He's a pro out of northern Arizona. Local product, I might add. Colorado boy, and he was there quickly, and Johnson, in his effort to get away from him, was just there too long, and the rest of the gold came over. Well, you described it perfectly, that Gherkin, quick pursuit on the screen out to that side, never had a chance to get set up. And at that point, Johnson trying to elude Gherkin, they just ran out of time because the quick pursuit from the inside forced it down and shut him down with uh, actually a loss. Anderson wide left, Smith to the right. Smith has a touchdown catch tonight. Lane to throw, looking for Smith. He's got him open. It's caught at the 45, and Jimmy Smith is down to the 43. Boy, was he ever open at that point, rolling into a zone on that side, one of the Birmingham players injured. Smith coming downfield, passes the front man, David Martin, the corner, and then turns. You see, coming into the picture, number 21 at that stage, the strong safety, Dave Dumars, overran it wide to the outside. So a uh, big gain, a crucial game. We'll be back in a moment to score 14-13. Birmingham Stallions have their schedule uh, a tough one. Tampa Bay twice, Boston, Chicago, and Philadelphia. Notice that there's not a losing team on their upcoming schedule. And if anybody had their future in their hands, the Birmingham Stallions do. Well, as you talked to Raleigh Dodge before the ball game, one of his concerns was that his club wouldn't be too weary, Tom. He expressed it to you down there. You showed the schedule, Raleigh on the sideline and they might be wearing down just a little bit in the second half with just three days rest. Well, they played Monday night against Michigan, a very tough game that you saw here on ESPN, and now they're involved in another toughie. Play action, lane to throw, dumps it out, that's White behind the line. Oh, what a fine reaction. Over to make the stop was Putt Choke. I mean, you talk about back-to-back -back linebacker reactions to screen passes left and right, first Gherkin, now Choke. That's great defense. It really is, and you you indicated how active they are, and you said earlier that Choate was the leading tackler in that defensive linebacker core, and on this football team, he also led the Southern Methodist Mustangs in tackles two straight years, so uh, he's no stranger when it comes to finding the man with the football. So, Birmingham on the Denver 44. It's now second and 11. Denver leads 14 to 13, and Lane is back to throw. Looks for his tight end. He's got him, Stevens, and the big guy crashes to the 35-yard line. Stevens, indeed, is a big target. 6'3", 230, out of Oklahoma State. He caught three passes coming into this game, had one of those for a touchdown. But I mean, that is a real-sized man, and when you get him in the open with that football, you've got your hands full. The drop of the secondary, you see the two... Two safeties dropping deep, and the corner's up. The linebacker's to the inside. They used a double outside zone. Lane read it perfectly, went to the right man in that case. Stevens, the tight end, and got some very crucial yardage. Third down and two, and now Skabinski in. He's set to the right side to help with the blocking. That's Johnson on the sweep. Got the first down. Oh, an individual effort, I might add, Boy. as the blitz was coming. Indeed. Had a nine-man rush at that point. Jimmy Carr, the defensive coordinator, says... It's time to gamble. He brought everybody, including the kitchen sink and the fans in the end zone. Now they're going to ask for the chain to come in for a measurement. With that tough schedule that Birmingham has ahead of it, two games with Tampa Bay, Philadelphia, Boston, Chicago, not a losing team on the schedule. Bear in mind also they could be whistling with a little help from our friends because Tampa Bay could help them out at Michigan Monday night and Arizona could help them out in Chicago Monday night. So they might get a little help in that scramble for a spot 
in the playoffs. We think that it's going to boil down to Chicago, Birmingham, Michigan, and Boston to see who gets that wild card berth. In this particular game, a long way to go with 2.19 left here in the third quarter. A nice drive by Birmingham at this stage. Pretty much kept alive by passing, but now they're in scoring territory. Lane has hit 13 of 18, 176 yards. Handoff straight ahead inside the 30 to about the 28-yard oh, line. On the carry, that's White. And defensively, a lot of people, Paremba among others, and Choate. White gets up, shaking just a bit, jogs off. Coming on now is Talton. Johnson and Talton are in the backfield now. Wide to the left is Smith. He has a touchdown catch. To the right side is Anderson. Second and seven. Lane to throw it. Again, he put it up almost for grabs. Over defensively with a good shot at it was Newton. Pass was intended for Talton, but Talton really had no chance to grab that ball. Lane had plenty of time to throw the football. He didn't uh, have really any pressure. Denver not blitzing that particular time, so they only had the three-man rush coming, and Raleigh Dodge changing up. He will normally while he does change up a lot with the play action stuff, will keep running those traps from side to side, maybe get two, maybe one, maybe nothing, then hope to break the big one, which they generally do. Frederick and Smith to the right side, back to throw is Lane. Intercepted at the 30, 40, midfield, down the field with it is Dumars. He's at the 20 and may go all the way. Touchdown, Denver goal. Dumars with his seventh interception of the year, his first tonight, and will await it officially, but I'm going to call it 75 yards or thereabouts. Well, he came in second in the league in interceptions, and this certainly was the most important interception I think that he has had this season, and all of his teammates are congratulating him because they took the Birmingham Stallions that were within relatively close field goal range, if not eventually going for the touch, a bad mistake by Lane, who rarely makes this type of a poor judgment as he's dropping back. He will throw out to the right side. He never sees Dumars cutting across in front. The ball at that stage intended for Daryl Mason, and it is a foot race. And it very is, close to 75 yards. Oh, oh, the guy that was chasing him was Jimmy Walker. That's a bit of a mismatch. So the drive for the extra point. Line is set. Spielman puts it up, and it's good. And so, with timeout here at a minute 15 to go, Denver 21, Birmingham 13. Craig Morton, the new head coach of the Denver Gold in his first ever appearance, he told me before the game, Don Heinrich, he always wanted to coach at this level. I almost would say to him now, if you knew it was going to be this easy, you'd have done it a lot sooner. Well, that's right. A minute and 15 to go in the third quarter. He's out in front, 21-13. He says... Man, it's a piece of cake in this game. But no, really, Tom, you know, yesterday watching the practice, you were there with me. He was talking to that ball club. We could overhear him. He said, look, fellas, I, I want you guys to have a lot of fun. I'm talking about enthusiasm. I'm talking about being aggressive. I want aggressive football. And then he says to us later, well, we'll see if they accept my style. Right now, they have been aggressive. And David Dumars who picked off that seventh interception of his career this season, took it down the sideline to give him a nice cushion. The pressure now on the Birmingham Stallions. So, kicking off Spielman. You saw Kincaid, number 80. He's waiting down at the goal line. Spielman hits it at him. He's at the 7 to the 10. Kincaid to the 15, 20. Nice return out to the 25-yard line. Dumars coming on the field, 78-yard interception return. So he's got to be a very, very happy fellow out of Northeast Louisiana, where he was both a receiver in the early years of his career and then moved to a defensive back as one of the Denver goal players is injured down That's on the field. That's uh, Bungart's linebacker out of Cal State Fullerton, number 57, shaken up. Well, you know the other thing we talked about on this Birmingham club and they are a young football team, a lot of them in their first or second year. And now is a case of to see what kind of poise they have trailing 
well for the first time in virtually five football games, uh, Tom, that that they've had to come from behind. They've they've been playing extremely well, but have been in control virtually all of those wins. So now, for the first time, with just three days rest, they're they're down by eight points, and yet a long time to go. So it'll be a case of seeing what type of character they have, and if they can maintain that poise, if they can get that running game back, and then of course throw the ball effectively. Let's talk about some upcoming games now, and in particular the Monday night contest. First of all, you'll see Tampa Bay at Michigan up at the Silver Dome in Pontiac. That'll be coming your way at 6 o'clock in the uh, East and 3 o'clock in the Pacific Coast. Very important game. Michigan 7-5 and five, along with uh, this Birmingham ball club, both in pursuit of Chicago and all of them in pursuit of Tampa Bay. Following that game in Michigan, we'll ask you to join Don Heinrich and yours truly in Chicago as Alan Risher and the Arizona Wranglers try to hang their second season loss on the Chicago Blitz. They defeated the Blitz in a magnificent come from behind win earlier in Arizona and young Alan Risher is a guy who knows how to get the ball in the end zone. Nope. There's John Bungarts going off the field being helped off by a couple of members of the medical staff and I think he got his bell rung as much as anything and uh, they're probably asking John if he knows what day it is. And How many fingers have I got up there the trainer will say. He's a little wobble-legged as he comes off. We hope it's nothing more serious than that. Well, That's Jimmy it. Carr, the defensive coordinator, has always played aggressive type football. And while there is plenty of time left in this football game, he's got his defense flying around. It's interesting to watch in the course of games as momentum swings back and forth. And certainly here, where Denver had trouble moving the ball coming out at the second half, now a big turnover for a touchdown by the defense. They're cranked up. In fact, it has been turnovers, or good play by the Denver defense, that has gotten them two scores. Lane with time, now going to get hit and sacked back at the 24-yard line. Boy, he had a lot of time to throw, but part of that was due to the excellent coverage deep by the Denver Gold secondary. Oh, and good pressure put on by Larry White, the defensive end. You'll see Larry White coming in from the right side, number 91. Uh, as he comes around, he gets knocked sideways, but now he'll come in, forcing Lane to step up inside, and then, of course, the resulting pursuit drops him. Second down, they call it 11, the ball at the 24. Lane to throw again, looking with time. Now scampering. Pass is caught by Smith, who goes out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. Call it the 38. 15-yard pickup and a first and 10 Birmingham. And Newton was there to make the stop. Good adjustment by Lane. Smith really wasn't that totally involved in the pattern. He moves by the inside corner on the first step, gives him a little hand shove. Then he uncovers as he sees Lane in trouble. Lane, as it turns out, the rush was hard from his left side, and he moved to his right as he spotted Smith upfield. It was a relatively easy throw, dropped it in there nicely. Bungart, we understand, Bungarts has a concussion. First down, Birmingham. On the delay, Talton with the handoff. Carries to the 40-yard line, and LaBelle Short is carried right along by Ken Talton. Not an easy job. LaBelle tips the Toledos at 6'2", 260. That last catch by Jim Smith was his fourth for 63 yards and one touchdown. And the offense having trouble running the football, despite the fact Birmingham is going to the air. Lane getting pretty good pressure. The pass blocking breaking down just a little bit. Lane uh, having trouble spotting those receivers. Important they pick up a big play here as we wind down to the end of the third quarter. And that's it. The end of three periods of play. Denver leading 21 to 13. All right. Ball is at the 40. We start the fourth period. That's three turnovers for Birmingham. Two interceptions and a fumble. All have been turned into points, or nearly so. Long downfield. Lane can't make the completion. What a struggle down there as Martin was downfield and a flag is down and we're going to have a roughing the passer call against LaBelle Short. Smith, the intended receiver, action on this field about 60 yards apart as Lane rifled it deep and it was Martin and Smith in a hand-to-hand. -hand. In the meantime, Martin uh, Lane was getting leveled by Short. Big penalty and it's going to keep Birmingham's drive alive. And actually, Martin was as you see the call being made unnecessary roughness call or roughing the passer Martin was fortunate at that point they were rolling in a zone away from uh, Smith 
and where Martin should never get beat, he was beat by Smith, the ball was short. The third quarter stats in rushing yards, Denver leading the vaunted Birmingham running attack by some 11 yards, passing a significant difference there between the two clubs, 25 to 191. Birmingham in control of the stats, Denver in control of the score, 21-13. First down for Birmingham, the ball on the Denver 45, Lane on the reverse gives to Smith. Gets five to the 40-yard line, again good reaction, Tyler and Choate, very good reaction. Penalties in this game, Denver's been assessed nine for 68 yards, not the least of which was this last 15-yarder. Birmingham has been assessed 20 yards on two penalties. Now you see the big difference in yardage, 301 to 146, yet Denver leads. Bear in mind, they recovered a fumble on the 11 and scored, and then a 78-yard interception and return by Dumars for another six-pointer. So they've gotten a total of 14 points on two big plays defensively, so to speak. That's Talton battering his way inside the 40, short of the first down at the 37-yard line. Tackle made by Pete Perry. And good gang tackling by that Denver goal defense as Perry had a lot of help, four people in on that tackle. And that shows that when they get ahead or when a club does get ahead, the fact that that enthusiasm and intensity picks up significantly and that's a good offensive line that they're given a lot of problems to here in the second half. Skiminski has come in now. Kid out of Purdue, number 31 for blocking strength. White hit behind the line, but a good surge by White. And I think he's got the first down. Nobody is more upset about it than Calvin Turner, who thought he should have had him. And Turner was uh, just working over the turf at about the 40-yard line. He, he was. If he hit the ball carrier as hard as he hit the turf with his two forearms there, he'd have dropped him for that loss. Buddy Adelette was pulling once again from his left guard position to the right side. And really, part of the reason Turner was there is Adelette read him as being upfield, figuring the back was riding his back closely. And, uh, of course, by passing him, he gave Turner a free shot. But with good balance, they picked up the first down. Anderson left and Smith in the slot. Lane hands off. Straight ahead, Talton dips back inside, close to the 30-yard line. Good adjustment by Talton. He wanted to run off that left side over the left tackle and left guard area. There was nothing there. The defense had cut it off, and he veered it back and turned uh, really a, a no gain into about three, three and a half yards. Birmingham started this drive on their own 25-yard line and uh, aided and abetted by a 15-yard roughing the passer call. They've kept it alive now. Denver only has eight first downs in this game, and Birmingham has 20. But Denver leads, 21-13. Lane in the flat, tight end Mason. Short of the first down at the 26-yard line. Third and a yard to go, and that's Newton over there. He's a rookie out of TCU. Six-footer, 220 pounds, number 53. And there's Mason, the tight end. 6'1", 220 out of Arkansas. Lavelle Short checks in now, and coming out of the... Denver defensive set is Whittingham. Third down and a yard to go at the 26. 11 and a half minutes remain. Again, Skabinski is in. Added blocking strength. Two tight ends in Skabinski to bookend the line. First down, Talton straight ahead inside the 25. Well, they went with the strength to the left that time, and that's the just straight power play. They go to the 6-1 defense. You see everybody down, slanting to the inside. Good block up ahead of it. As, as they roll them back, Battaglia back in the football game, and that's just power football at that point, as it, Pat Phoenix is down on the field. He came into this game with a bad knee. So here comes Raleigh Dutch, 21-13 Denver. We'll be back. It'll be another first down for Birmingham. Pat Phoenix, rookie out of Mississippi, shaken up. But the good sign is that he's sitting up almost under his own power and now up on his feet but he's gonna have to go off and there'll be some changes now in that offensive front. Sandin will have to move over there, do some double dirty, uh, double duty. The crowd looking on, Denver on top by eight, but all the statistics, except for that scoreboard, belongs to Birmingham, which certainly has got to add some frustration to the Birmingham side of the field. They've been up and down the field, but costly mistakes. A fumble by the usually very reliable Frederick gave the ball to Denver on the 11. 
One of two interceptions thrown by Lane and Dumars ran at 78 for a score. So it's first down, Birmingham. They trail by eight. Lane straightens to throw. Quick out, caught, driven out of bounds by Martin over there as Smith put a flag down. I think Denver's got 12 men out there. What do you think? Delay of game against Denver. I think they've got 12 men out there. Yep, they did have 12 men on the field. I hey, think. if you can get away with it. Well, it's worth <laughs> a try. Hey, I'll tell you one time. <laughs> when I was coaching, <laughs> we were up here in Denver playing the Broncos about uh, eight or nine years ago. They had 12 men on the goal line. We were at the two for two plays in a row. We finally knocked it in. The officials, we were yelling at them. They never did recognize the difference. Delay of game. They're talking now with Banks, who's one of the kill captains for this Birmingham ball club. That's called gamesmanship. Really? <laughs> you know, that's a good play by Lane at that point. I'm sure he automatic to that quick out on that side. David Martin playing on the corner was really about eight or nine yards off, and they have not taken advantage of those corners playing soft. Well, if you can read lips, you can see that the official called. I, I think that uh, everybody can hear uh, referee Kamaski, but you and I, Don. So, oh, they're uh, trying we've to been, uh, tell us something. I know we probably irritated our viewers by talking over Kamaski, but his mic did not work when we first saw him. Now we understand it is workable, and that you're hearing him at home. We apologize for talking over him, but uh, he's not audible to us up here. Talton tries the right side, and Denver's there to swarm him under. They made it a first down at the 18-yard line after that the delay of game call against the goal for having too many men. Now Gherkin and Perry are there to stop Talton on that sweep and they're going to advance it down um, to about the 15 yard line. It'll be second down and call it two and we understand that Phoenix suffered uh, the bane of every football player's existence, a knee, and uh, whether it will require surgery or not only time will tell and of course medical attention but I doubt that we'll see Pat Phoenix the balance of this contest. Well, he was doubtful with that knee coming in. Second and three. White, straight ahead. Good hard rush by that Birmingham front line, and it appears that White may have carried for the first down. We'll see where Kamansky puts it down. It is going to be a first down for Birmingham. Mark it at the 11-yard line, first and 10 at the 11, which means, uh, well, they've got it just outside the 10 now, which means they can get a first down without a touchdown. And what an important drive this is as far as Birmingham's concerned with just under 10 minutes to go in this football game and trailing by eight points. They got to come up with a touchdown. If they score, do you think they'll go for two? On the sweep, Johnson at the 10, hit, fights inside, very close to the five. Good job by Johnson as he was juking around in there and David Martin, poor tackling. He should have just zeroed in on him and taken him. He kind of went for the fakes and... Uh, actually caused him to to miss quite frankly as Johnson comes right side Adelaide out in front gets knocked off 78 right there now you see him kind of wrap his arms but he doesn't get his body and shoulders into it gives him an opportunity to get about three extra yards out of that and then the pursuit wraps it up Johnson's got him by 28 pounds and he was under a full head of steam that might have jarred more Martin important a to bit. go low then all right second down now and six white to about the two-yard line. Then hit by Short, among others. Bottom of the pile, you see number 50. That's Gherkin. Boy, a first-year pro out of northern Arizona, and he's really played just a fine football game tonight. Gherkin and Newton have been the outside people. Napton's been in there. White, Short, Turner, Peremba, and Perry have been part of that down 3-4 defensive alignment. And then Choate, Whittingham, Schnabel, Bungart's banged up. Got a slight concussion. He's been out of there. Well, the ball sitting on about the three, as you indicated earlier, Tom. They can get a first down at about the one or one and a half foot line. Not That's the it. yard line, one and a half foot line. But the length of the football outside the end zone would give them a first and goal. But, of course, Birmingham wants a TD. Lane rolling, dumps it off. Nobody there but Mason. Touchdown, Birmingham. Oh, what a good call. <laughs> oh, was it ever. And that is Mason's first touchdown of the year. So he's got to be happy. The play action fake of the quick trap up the middle. Watch them go for it here as they close to the inside. Johnson faking up the middle. Lane rolling out. The coverage to that side totally blown. Martin gets a gift and a big six points for Birmingham. So with the touchdown catch, now Lane has thrown two tonight. Nine on the year. He's got his books balanced a bit. 
He's nine touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Now they've not attempted a two point conversion, but they're down by one. They need eight points here to tie this game up. And they have not gone for a two pointer this season. It is 21 Charge. to 19. Denver. Denver's taking time. Craig Morton. Showing the signs of all harried coaches in his first football game as a head man. Well, a bit of speculation here. Eight minutes and 16 seconds remain. Here's another look at the touchdown toss. Again, Lane faking to Johnson. Rolls out, he sees it quickly, no pressure, and immediately dumps it off. Normally speaking, that's going to be the safety man's responsibility to cover him. The view does not show it, but he went for the run fake, and it happened so quickly down there. You cannot hesitate. You have to stay with your responsibility. They did not stay with Mason, and he got a cinch, six points. Now keep in mind that this may not be as big a momentous decision as we would uh, have you believe. Even if Birmingham goes for two and fails, a field goal would still give them a one-point win. And of course, if they do go for two, they've got a tie ball game. Well, it's a chess game. Raleigh Dutch has his kicking unit on the sideline till the last possible moment, waiting and to see what the defensive unit of the Denver Gold is going to do. And Gummy Carr was down here, had all the defensive players over, talking to them like a Dutch uncle. Now you see the scoreboard and a lot of time left, 8-16. And now you look down the field here at Mile High Stadium, a 75-yard drive that took 6.44 on the clock, engineered by Lane and company. And they're going for it. Indeed. Lane comes back on and uh, Norwood stays on the sidelines. Norwood has kicked two field goals tonight. This is Lane's second touchdown toss. Mason catching this one. Smith got the other one. And now we're going to see about Birmingham going for two. Right now it's 21-19 Denver. Lane, play action to throw it. All alone, Mason did not get in. Brought down by Martin. Oh, and you know, it was a tackle. great play, too. Oh, it was. It was a delay. Fake play action off the right side. Slant. But that time, David Martin stayed with the responsibility. As you'll see, the play action of Lane faking the slant to the right side. Should hide the ball in his stomach. Has plenty of time to throw the football. Skabinski makes the grab. But a good, high, jarring tackle by Martin, where earlier he missed the one on Johnson by not going low. Denver leads, 21 to 19, we'll be back. Mortensen's first try for two points. A well thought out play. Don, watch him as he goes for the tight end, Mason. Well, this time, uh, rather than Mortensen, it's Lane. Excuse me, Lane. That is dropping back, but watch the high tackle. He puts the headgear up into the numbers area, catches him on the arm, but by virtue of where he took him, he took away his momentum and kept him from getting that extra yard and a half into the end zone as Martin standing on the sideline talking to one of the coaches upstairs saying that's the way to tackle him. When Johnson, the big back that he missed a couple plays earlier, should have taken him low. That time he did the right thing by going high and taking the leverage of Skabinski away and shutting off the two-pointer. Now it's incumbent upon Denver to get down for field position and a three-pointer if nothing else. It puts the onus on Birmingham and forces them to go for a touchdown. James has it at the 10. 15-20. Bumped but stays on his feet out to about the 27-yard line. If Denver can add three, it really puts the pressure on Birmingham. They must get six to win. There's the scoring drive. 15 plays, 75 yards. And the touchdown toss. Lane second of the evening. Mason catching this one earlier in the opening drive. It had been Smith, and in between, Norwood with two 42-yard field goals. Denver's gotten two touchdowns out of Mortensen on short yardage runs on quarterback keepers, and they've gotten a 78-yard intercept and return by Dumars. And now they start first and 10 on the gold 26-yard line. Mortensen at quarterback has gone all the way. Hand off to Sydney, straight ahead. Not a bad charge by that offensive line. The ball on the turf coming up with it is Reed, but I believe the officials are going to call the play dead, and Reed is more than a bit upset about the whole circumstance. Well, you have to say, uh, emotions are running very high. Nothing fancy with this play. Pulling the guard across in front of it, and the 
lead back up there, the power off the right guard side, and of course the pursuit, there's not a whole lot of action going on, the ball kind of rolling out, but the pile up early, the official declared the play dead. Second and six after that four yard pickup by Sydney, and now Vincent White, number 44, is in as the tailback in the I formation. James is flanked to the right and Durden to the left. Mortensen gives the ball to White. Outside, Vince has got some speed. He's out to the 35-yard line, maybe the 36. Reed there to bring him down. Good job by White veering it outside. He wanted to go up off the left guard, left tackle area, but again, pretty well controlled at the line of scrimmage by the defense. And White, with that good quickness and the good vision to read it, bounced outside and picked up some nice real estate. Third and a yard to go. White comes out now. Canada comes out. Durden comes out. Bo Matthews is in the ball game. Sydney is back in. Uh, one thing that is troubling White is the fact that he's been with the ball club a short period of time and really, I'm sure, is still learning the formations and plays, which uh, puts an added burden on him. Big play here. Big third down. No question about that. Two tight ends to bookend the line. Blocking strength. James is in as a wing back. Back to throw, Mortensen gonna get rushed, fires it, complete to Sydney, midfield, 40, fumbles the ball, it's on the turf, Sydney falls back on top of it. Oh, oh, oh. Billy Caesar knocked it loose, but Harry Sydney had the presence of mind to roll back on that football down at the 38 yard line. Well, there's a gutsy call by Craig Morton. The play action coming to that side. Sydney, the up back, will be coming into your picture as Walker dusts Mortensen. Sydney beating the back to that side. Now you see it get hit. The ball's going to lay there. Nobody really for Denver as they overrun it. Sydney in the right position, the right spot at the right time. Morton Craig. says, whew, we're living right. Craig Morton is calling the plays for his quarterbacks tonight in his debut as head coach. I've got to believe he's having the time of his life. He leads 21-19. First down at the 38. That's Bo Matthews trying to go outside. Good effort by Mo. They strung him out. Bo was strung out by that uh, linebacker McPherson coming up to help out D'Amico. And Bo gave it his best shot running laterally and just got to the 39 for a loss of one. Second and 11 now. Well, they made a big third down play on that pass to Sydney, but this Birmingham defense with just five minutes to go as it's dropping to 459, they've got to keep Denver out of field goal range, let alone get it back and sustain a drive of their own and get a shot at some points. At the 39, we've got James to the right side, Durden flanked to the left, Bo Matthews along with Sydney in the backfield. That's White back there. Now Mortensen going to have to run. Gets to the 35. Klein pulls him down. Good. Pick up a four. Be third and seven. Good play by Klein. They had the four-man rush in. Klein fell back off going to the inside. You'll see Klein as Walker 75 goes to the right. Klein will come from the left. He's playing off the tackle. 98. Comes back in and drops Mortensen. Good adjustment. Mortensen had some running room had he gotten by Klein, but an excellent reaction on Klein's part, both shedding the offensive tackle and reading the play to get back into it. Flanked wide to the left side now is Matheny, new member of the ball club, number 83. Mortensen is at the Birmingham 35. Hand off straight ahead, Bo Matthews to about the 32. Spencer, number 55, that's Billy Caesar. Boy, I tell you, what an active ball player Caesar is. He seems to be everywhere. He really is. And now the field goal team coming in. This will be about, uh, well, roughly a 48 or 49 yard field goal. So the air is light up here and uh, Denver has a chance to increase that lead a little bit. Spielman's hit two from 50. In fact, the 50 yarder defeated Birmingham in the first meeting between these two. And now he'll be trying from the 39. We'll call it a 49 yard try by Brian Spielman. He's two for four in that range bracket. One of them came against Los Angeles. The other previous 50-yarder came against this Birmingham ball club. He hits it. It's got the distance. It's wide to the left. So Spielman misses. Birmingham is still alive. Three minutes to go. They trail by two. 
Wonder what kind of a game they've got up there tonight. What a beautiful shot of the moon <laughs> as it shines down here on the beautiful Mile High City of Denver. Denver Gold, somebody in the truck, waxing poetic. Don't miss that lacrosse contest on Sunday. Johns Hopkins in Syracuse. Trivia question for you. Don Heinrich, one of the greatest football players that ever carried the football, National Football League, was a magnificent lacrosse player at Syracuse. Name, please? Jimmy Brown. You got it. I, you've been reading, huh? No, no. I just want to let you know I remember those little things. Either that or I reach back that far. Three minutes remain. Birmingham is down by two. A field goal could win it. They start at their 32. Denver's defense upends Lonnie Johnson as he gets out to about the 34-yard line. Well, Birmingham didn't get a whole lot there, and what they would like to do with two minutes and 45 seconds left is make a long, sustained drive and get at least a decent shot at the field goal, if not six points, run that clock down, and not give Denver a chance with it as the officials take a timeout. We got a shaken up player down there. That's number 59. That's Kyle Whittingham shaken up. He's coming off. We'll take a timeout with two and a half to go. Denver still leads. Craig Morton, one of the writers, called him Old Rickety Knees. What a debut he's having tonight. His team leads 21-19. He's hanging on, and his defense has been superb. His offense sputtering a bit, but all in all, it's been a sensational debut for the new head coach of the Denver Gold. And Kyle Whittingham on the sideline, sitting on the bench, been on his feet a couple times. His dad, Coach Whittingham, with the Los Angeles Rams now, formerly at BYU, coaching a great linebacker in his own right with the Rams, with the Eagles, and with the New Orleans Saints. Lane is back to pass, second and eight. Fires it down the side, caught. Up on top of the receiver is David Martin, and over there as well for this Denver defensive unit is Gherkin, and at the bottom of the pile is Smith. Well, a crucial catch to pick up the first down at this point. Two minutes and five seconds. We're coming down to the two-minute warning mark here. The ball will be at the uh, Birmingham 45-yard line as we come to the... Well, the officials have stopped the clock to make it a first down, and now they'll start it up again. Mark it first down, mark it ready for play, and then we'll have the two-minute warning. There it is, two minutes now. So a second ticks away, and we've got two minutes to go in the game as Denver leads by two. Don't go away. The ball will be at the 45-yard line. Birmingham down by two has the ball on their 45, and two minutes remaining in this game. And remember that Norwood has kicked two field goals in the ball game tonight. He has 18 out of 25. He's kicked two of three, and both of them 42 yarders. Yes, Don? And Kyle Whittingham back in. Got his bell rung for a moment, but he's okay. Lane having a very nice night, but he's been intercepted twice. Dancing about, looking, looking. Oh, my, how fortunate that he wasn't picked off by Kyle Whittingham. Oh, Lane got away with one. Yes, he did. That's about the third time tonight. He didn't get away with two earlier that were picked off. One returned for the touchdown, but he's flirting with disaster. Kyle Whittingham, just having come in, showed that uh, he's all right. He, he's got a, his uh, senses about him, knew his responsibility, and very nearly picked that ball off. So White checks into the backfield now for Birmingham, and uh, who's going out? It'll be Mason, the tight end. So they're going with the wideouts. That'd be Anderson coming toward you. And to the far side will be Frederick. Smith is set in the slot on the right side. Lane from his 45, hands off. Big opening, Talton buries himself at about the 46 yard line. Just ran his nose right into the turf there as he crossed midfield. Very close to the first down, but he's gonna be shy. It'll be third and a yard. The ball at the Denver 46. And now Mason comes back in, obviously with a call from the bench, Raleigh Dutch. Time, minute 32, minute 31. Remember, with the first down, the clock stops. But Birmingham is still now third and one at the Denver 46. Lane sneaks for the first down, and that'll stop the clock with a minute 19. First and 10, Birmingham on the Denver 44-yard line. And Birmingham still has three timeouts left here in the second half, which could be extremely important. Only Dodge was signaling he wanted to take a timeout, and he's going to do that as Smith went over to talk to the head coach, and now Lane walks over to talk to the man who runs things for the Birmingham Stallions. We'll repeat again in case you've just joined us the importance of this game for Birmingham. 
though they played Monday night against Michigan, a very tough game that they won in overtime. Here they are three days later back at it. They'll get a rest now till a week from Sunday, but coming up on their schedule, two with Tampa Bay, one with Philly, one with Chicago, and one with Boston. And of course, Monday night, Tampa Bay at Michigan and Chicago hosting Arizona. Game we'll be covering. In fact, you'll see both on ESPN. It is a very tight race in that Central Division. And Roley Dutch is trying to get his ball club a playoff spot. Of course, Boston in the Atlantic Division, right there at 7-5 and five also. So it's going to go right to the wire. It really is. And we've got a great football game going here this evening. Not one of these fans, I don't believe, have left this football stadium as yet. It Mile High Stadium here in Denver. Morton talking on the sidelines to his players. A little encouragement. Little you know, I kidded him yesterday, Don. I said, um, going to reactivate yourself? He said, I threw the ball once today and it hurt. And then he looked at me and he grinned. He said, next week I may throw it two or three times. <laughs> but I doubt that there's any thought that Craig at 39 or thereabouts after 19 years in the NFL would come back to coach. Although his boyish good looks belie the fact that he's uh, very near 40. It is first and 10. The ball at the 44-yard line. Back to throw his lane. Great protection. Airs it out downfield for Smith. Intercepted. Picked off by Martin. At the 5. 10. 15 and out of bounds. Flag goes down. Clipping could be the call on Denver. But with a minute 6 to go, Lane is intercepted for the third time. From an end zone shot, the secondary dropping deep, doubling in and out on both sides. As you see, the ball overthrown, played perfectly by Martin. And there was an opportunity for the receiver to try and get a hand in there. It looked like Lane was throwing a lead pass to Martin at that point. The other angle at that stage, looking at it again, where Smith just couldn't quite get his feet under him, watching Smith go downfield. Watch the blind side from the back right there. Woohoo! Those kind hurt. So play resumes after this timeout as Denver has the ball and leads by two. We have an illegal block on the run back by the offense number 68. All right, let's talk a little bit about Budweiser's most valuable player of the game. Our vote here goes to Mortensen of the Denver Gold. His two touchdown runs have put his ball club on top. He may have to share a little bit of that Budweiser with some defensive backs like uh, Dumars and a 78-yard touchdown return, Martin with his third interception of the year, and Miller with his first. All had a hand in this Denver two-point advantage. The game not over yet, but for now, Fred, for all you do, this Bud's for you, but spread it around among the defensive backs, will you? <laughs> well, you know that he appreciates what they did, and you know he appreciates what that offensive line did, and he's certainly deserving for his first full ball game to have scored a couple of touchdowns to be the MVP. You know, you look back, in his college career, here's a little bit of trivia for you. Mortensen was a Chinese major at Arizona State. Now, I don't know what that has to do with football. He knows a lot about crowds as he ran it in there a couple of times. Greg Anderson is shaken up. He was the victim of that crackback illegal block thrown on the return, and I think... Um, from where he's, uh, from the indication of the injury, I wouldn't be a bit surprised he's suffering severe back spasms because he's been almost convulsing down there and they're examining his lower back and uh, he appears to be in, in a lot of pain. It's uh, an unfortunate uh, circumstance. Coming up this weekend, a lot of action in the United States Football League. LA will be at Oakland tomorrow, New Jersey at Washington, Philadelphia at Boston. That'll be an important ball game. Boston, of course, trying to get a wild card berth. And Monday, we've got the big doubleheader on ESPN. We'll open up with Tampa Bay at Michigan and Arizona at Chicago. You know, you go back to that interception by David Martin right here to give the ball uh, to the Denver goal. They went to Smith at that point, and Smith was running a hook-and-go type of move. Rather than kind of take their 10, 12, 15 yards if they could, they tried to go for it all at once make the big play, and Lane, who uh, coming into this game had just eight interceptions, had three tonight, so that's one-third of what he has done to this point in that five-game winning streak, has made several crucial mistakes. One return for a touchdown by Dumars, the strong safety. This crucial one, if anything, at that point, you're saying if you can't hit Smith, 
you've got to throw that football away. And whether he was trying to just overthrow it to the point that it would be back in the end zone somewhere, he did not. And Martin playing it perfectly, picked it off and gives Craig Morton in his coaching debut right now on the verge of a victory. Well, there's the, something we did not want to see. The stretcher has come out for Anderson. And uh, we seem to have a feeling of deja vu. It wasn't that many days ago we watched the great tight end, Raymond Chester, go off the field on a stretcher. He, uh, I think, will probably play tomorrow, only in next brain. Well, Fortunate there. Living in the Bay Area, I saw an interview with him, and he said that he wanted to play this week if he possibly could. So for the fans around the country that were watching that game, where all the precautions are taken to make sure on those neck injuries or back injuries, we're happy to report that Raymond Chester is back and healthy, was certainly sore about it. I happened to ride home on the plane with him, and he said he had a stiff neck, but uh, healthy enough to play again. Injured player going off the field. We'll be back. A minute five remaining in this game. 21 to 19, Denver leading here, and we're getting uh, Anderson placed on a stretcher as the crowd of uh, better than 30,000. We've got a lot to cheer about tonight. This Denver ball club has been an opportunistic one to be sure, and as a result of a 78-yard intercept and return by Dumars, two runs by Mortensen of short yardage, Ron Blanding, who was uh, good enough to come by at halftime and visit with us, down on the bench, a sideline celebrating with his team, barring a complete um, mishap by his club on top 21-19 figures to win this one, although uh, the Birmingham uh, Stallions have three timeouts left and uh, the scoreboard says three and the gold have two left according to the scoreboard. You look at the situation right now as far as Birmingham is concerned, even if they have three timeouts, it's going to be tough to get an opportunity to get that football back. But you go back and often is said, the turnovers are so important and what you do with those turnovers. The fumble tonight at the 11-yard line where they took it on in for six points with the option run at that stage by Fred Mortensen. The interception that was returned some 78 yards by David Dumars. Three interceptions uh, as the game went along. So there are four turnovers, two of which were capitalized on significantly. And the, the other one. two, uh, the interception across the way by Miller and this one here by Martin, right. stopped two very big Birmingham drives. So in their own way, they forced the, the Birmingham ball club to go from offense to defense. So Raleigh Dutch apparently is going to have his winning streak end at uh, five. And as a result, his team will now be seven and six. We'll take a look, if we may, at the standings in the uh, Pacific Division, or at least we'll run down them for you. If this ball game ends as it is now, why uh, Denver will be uh, five and eight. Arizona playing a uh, Monday night will be four and eight. They're going against Chicago. Los Angeles plays Oakland tomorrow. Los Angeles leading at six and six. Oakland um, is at five and seven. Now then, if Oakland wins tomorrow, they'll go to six and seven. So will Los Angeles. Denver will be just a game back at five and eight. Should Arizona win Monday night against Chicago, they too would be just a game out of the top spot in the Pacific Division, which is really a tight one. A highly competitive, though not nearly as romantic figure-wise as the Central Division. You see Tampa Bay, they'll be playing Michigan. They're nine and three. Birmingham now figures to go to seven and six. And of course, now they'll be looking to get some help from their friends. We wish you well, Mr. Anderson. I hope that the injury is not nearly as serious as it appears to be. Godspeed. First down now, and the ball is uh, at the six-yard line. Mortensen hands off. Birmingham's defense buries the running back. That's Sidney right at the six-yard line. Little or no gain. Clock shows a minute one, and now we've had a timeout taken to stop the clock. Now the Birmingham Stallions have two timeouts left. Can you consider and think of the frustration of this Birmingham ball club? They will have all these statistics on their side of the ledger. A preponderance of first downs, 25 to 9. Yardage over 300 yards to about 200. And yet, as it was in the first game, every statistic belonged to Birmingham except the scoreboard. But strange things can happen, and with the two timeouts remaining, they get them called quickly enough, should the Denver Gold not pick up a first down, uh, they could keep them within a matter of uh, 30 to 40 seconds to get one more shot with that football 
and kicking deep in their own territory, assuming they get them three and out. And I would think that Denver might even take a, a penalty when they go back there to punt, let that 30-second clock run. But they could get it in halfway decent field position and get one more turn at it. Well, and bear in mind that Norwood is a, a very gifted field goal man. The young kickers kick 242 yarders. He already has had a 50 yarder this year, so he's got the foot to handle it. And in this thin, rarefied mountain mile high air, why he might just have enough foot to kick it from a, an awfully long distance here. Well, it's up to the defense to get them out quickly and not give up any yards and get those timeouts called in a hurry. Clock will not start till the ball is snapped. We've got a minute one. The ball is at the six. Denver trying to hold on to a 21-19 advantage. Mortensen, he's been named our Budweiser player of the game. Hand off Larry Canada. Good bull-like rush by Canada. Takes it out very close to the eight. And now another whistle, and Dave Kamansky, the referee, signals still another timeout. And that reduces Birmingham's timeouts to one now. As the Stallions stop it again. Reigns was there to make the tackle on Canada. And the uh, progress on the football mark it out to the eight-yard line. Well, we've certainly enjoyed this ball game. We hope that you've uh, enjoyed it along with us. We've had a lot to talk about tonight. You see Kamansky over now checking with Dutch. And I don't know, uh, just to doing a little bookwork, I guess, making sure he's got the right guy to call the timeouts. Glenn Kazmarek, the back judge, talking with one of the Birmingham players, reminding him, you know, it's just one timeout left, fellas, so they try to keep everybody aware. Another thing the officials do, of course, tonight they're wearing shorts here in the warm weather, but they wear an armband. They put an armband on their arms in that last two-minute period. Just another reminder to both benches as well as the players on the field that they're into the two-minute situation. There's the crowd. This is the best supported franchise most watched in the United States Football League. And, of course, they'll be hosting the United States Football League's first ever championship game. Whatever the two teams uh, will be, that'll be June, uh, July the 17th here at Mile High Stadium. What a festive day that'll be for the United States Football League and, of course, for the city of Denver. A well-deserved honor. Great football fans here in this city. They certainly are, despite 38,000 plus this evening. They're averaging slightly over 42,000. Wide to the right side is James. Canada's in there now as the up back in that I formation. Third down and seven from the nine. And Mortensen using the clock, and he hands off and breaking it for the first down is Canada. And that may be as big a play as this ball game has had. And guess who they went over? The left guard, Glenn Hyde, the old pro, and he opened a big hole, and Larry Canada took it. Well, another old pro, Canada. He starred with the new coach, Craig Morton. They were both Bronco teammates for a number of successful seasons. And speaking of Craig Morton, there he is. Well, our congratulations to you, coach. What a magnificent debut, and we wish you and the franchise the best. He's uh, accepting congratulations along the side and passing him out. Delightful guy, came out of the broadcasting booth this week and he's down there in his first ever coaching debut. And he looks like he's got a winner. 20 seconds remaining. And Mortensen falls on the ball. 14 seconds. Don, thank you. Look forward to the Arizona-Chicago game Monday. And don't forget, as Morton gets congratulations from everybody, it'll be Tampa Bay and Michigan to open up our big doubleheader on Monday night. The well, game's over. The crowd loved it. And Craig Morton wins his debut. The final score, Denver 21, Birmingham 19. Now back to Tom Mees in Bristol. Thank you very much, Tom Kelly. A crowd of over 38,000 showing up at Mile High Stadium tonight to watch the Denver Gold pull off the upset over the Birmingham Stallions. The final score, 21 to 19, and the final analysis, three interceptions played a big part in the downfall of the Birmingham Stallions. One of those returned for 78 yards for a touchdown by David Dumart. The Denver Gold pull the upset over Birmingham. Final score, Denver 21, and the Birmingham Stallions 19. For Tom Kelly and Don Heinrich, I'm Tom Mees. Good night, everyone.